right, everybody, welcome into the Pillow Talk edition of Pugs and Company. Here, ch- take two. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm rushed. I'll tell you why I'm rushed. I'll get to why I'm rushed in a minute. Oh, you'll hear. Twitter again. I'm slugging it out with people just to drive. Hey, everybody, welcome to Pillow Talk edition of Pugs and Company. Heard every Sunday through Thursday night right here at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. This is the second of two offerings we bring you each and every day here on the Radio Misfits Network. First of all, we've got the High Noon Show that comes on at noon. Look at that. Look at that. I got Harrison Ford just sticking out of my... Look at that. Oh, God, I'm fat. Oh, my God. This has not been good for me. I've gotten so fat. Hi, April. This is the second of two shows that we do each and every day. The first we call High Noon. That comes at you at, well, quite frankly, noon Central Standard Time. And what's that? Well, I'll tell you what that is. That's a a daily roundup of all the things that are trending. Hot topics. Hot topics. If it's going around, current events, that kind of thing, that's what we talk about at noon. So we hope you can join us. It's like talk radio the way talk radio is supposed to be. You remember when talk radio wasn't all, I blame Obama forever. You remember when there was like normal things that people talked about on talk radio when it wasn't just all crazy people? You know, well, that's what I'm trying to do with the noon show. So I hope you can tune in and check it out. That some of you may know, I, I I I once had a career in talk radio when back back when people were on the radio and you had no idea how they voted, you had no clue as to who they supported. Why? Because you know that just wasn't the sort of proper thing you talked about in mixed. Where's James? Mixed company. I'm missing James. James Parker from. Uh, Hold on, I'm trying to fix. I'm late. I was late today. I'm a little bit rushed. I apologize. James Parker from New Orleans is going to join us. We may even get some uh, sunglasses coming in here at some point. But sunglasses has the kid, and uh, he's watching football. So, <laughs> you know. Hi, Emily. Hi, Elp. Hello, friend. Hi, Rick Bradley. You're not fat. You're husky. No, Rick, I'm fat. No, man. You know what? If you look at you go back, because what do I do after every show? I hate watch all of this stuff. I will go back and I will. You go back to like the first shows. I've gained like 20 pounds. Oh, my God. I'm awful. And I remember, you know, when I moved down here, I was feeling good. I was like, all right, I'm going to be back in Texas. That means I don't have to stop my running and my jogging routine in the winter because you can't really. You know, I used to run. I used to run a lot. I used to run like four or five miles a day, and I was feeling really good. I I had an incident. I had an incident. I injured my heart, and uh, I I, I decided that I needed to start running. I needed to build up my cardio. Oh, my cardio was great, and I'd run, but I was in Chicago. So then it would turn to like winter, and I couldn't run because I'm an old man now, and it's ice. And I'm going to be like 49 and break a hip. I'm not 49. I'm just going back a few years. Um, well, break a hip. That's too young to break a hip. So, you know, you had to stop and then I'd get chubby in the winter. But this time I'm like, awesome. I'm moving to Texas. I'll be able to keep running. And and I'm in this beautiful neighborhood here at the one percenter compound where I the runs are now. Granted, when I lived in Chicago, I had these gorgeous historic woods around me and I could run in the woods and it was so beautiful. And it was so, it was, I used to run on something called the old plank trail. Now, you know what the old plank trail is? I'll tell you what the old plank trail is. The old plank trail is an ancient Indian trail that links the tip of Lake Michigan in in Northern Indiana with the Mississippi river. Yeah, a bunch of Indians like way back in the day they carved out this trail and they used to they used to go from from the tip of uh of Lake Michigan and they used to go all the way to the Mississippi River. And then it became trade routes and then the white man came and then it became something else and now it's called Route 66. But or Lincoln Highway. No, I'm sorry, not Route 66. It's Route 30, historic Route 30, the Lincoln Highway, which is also very historic. But right off the Lincoln Highway is the Old Plank Trail. And I used to be able to run up and down that, and it's in the woods, and I'd see animals, and it was so awesome. But now I'm here, I'm in the HP in Dallas, and my run would be a little bit different. I'd be running past like hundred million dollar homes, you know, I mean, this is, uh, I, the first day I got here, I remember I ran past Jerry Jones's house and I'm like, eh, this is kind of a nice run too. I'm not seeing woodland creatures, but I am seeing disgustingly wealthy people. And that's kind of like creatures. So almost the same thing, but guess what? 
I stopped running almost immediately. I stopped running. I stopped running over the summer. I was running with my son. My son was training for football and he made fun of the way I run. And I don't know what happened, but I stopped running and now I'm fat. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Stop obsessing about everything. You'll be fine. If I stop obsessing, Leslie, I will cease to be even as interesting as I am now. And quite frankly, I don't find myself all that interesting at the moment. So what's wrong with you people for tuning in every day? Inner monologue. Shouldn't say that. Said the quiet stuff out loud, didn't I? Where's James? You know, dude can't say that he's going to be here and then not be here. So let's, let's see what that's about. Leave me out here. I'm loaded for bear. Oh, I was fighting with people on Twitter again. Oh my God. I'll tell you all about that. One ringy dingy. Two ringy. No, I'm very grateful that I have you guys. Come on. I'm self deprecating. I've always been that way. And no, yeah, he's not going to answer. So forward to the voicemail. Hey, this is James Parker. Sorry, Mr. Cole. I would tell you to leave your name, your number, but you know what to do. I mean, my phone's telling me what your number is. So you don't really need to leave that, but so just do whatever you got to do. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. You told me not to leave a message because that's what old people do, but I told you that I do it because after I leave a message, I can be assured that your phone will then go boop, 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 boop. It'll give you like an extra beep letting you know that someone left a message. So I find this to be a very effective way of telling you that you said you were going to be on tonight and it's just you and me. And now you left me out here all alone. So who's the asshole now, James Parker? All right. I think that'll get him. That should work. All right. I mean, I got stuff. I can do it by myself. That's not, you know, please tell James I apologize for calling him a sperm stain, but not really. Oh, he is. He is a sperm stain. Zero sugar Dr. Pepper, man. I'm telling you. Dr. Pepper Zero. Freaking miracle sauce. Ah. What's this? What's he got? Like a Wu-Tang? He's got like a Wu-Tang thing. What? Where's your camera, Wu-Tang boy? All right, so I'll tell you what I've been doing. So uh, on Twitter, a lot of you guys aren't on Twitter. There he is. What, what was that, a Wu-Tang symbol? I like I like your little Wu-Tang symbol. Oh, is this is this really going to be a problem now? All right, now I'm here. Okay, your mic sounds terrible again. Like, what do uh -oh. you do? I'm not in stereo or something? Stereo. Do I need to turn it down? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I th it sounds like it's just your house mic. It sounds like your actual mic isn't on, but it's coming through uh -huh. a second. Okay, let me fix that. Yeah, he, he can fix it. All right, so a lot of a lot of you people uh, in the chat room and stuff, you're my friends on Facebook, but you're not Twitter folk. And that's uh, that's unfortunate because I really like the Twitter boy. I'll tell you, I get into the fights on Twitter. I get, I'm, I'm, <sighs> Facebook for me is like going over to your relative's house for family dinner. It's like, you know. Yeah, I don't want to be interesting. As a matter of fact, I just want to eat. I want to do what I got to do. And then I want to get out of there and go home. That's that's what Facebook is. Man, there's too many people They're like, I didn't know that side of you. And quite frankly, I am shocked. I don't need that with fa that, the Facebook thing. On Twitter, it's way more. Are you good? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, there he is. There he is. Look at him. It's James. Oh, I know exactly what that means now when you say it sounds like the computer mic and not my actual mic. So. Yeah. Easy fix. Okay, very good. So I was explaining why I was a little bit late coming on today. I got into it with some people. Got in got into it with the blue check mafia on, on Twitter. So you got in a, so you, you replied to a blue check and no, their no. reply crowd. No, I don't do that. Happen. no, I posted something and then the blue checks came after me. The blue checks replied to me. You're not a blue check. It Why doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, dude. I'm interesting. That's all. Well, that yeah, matters. but it's still a punch down. What for me or for them? For them. Well, that's what I think. Yeah, yeah. I could be a blue check. I could get myself a blue check. I'm telling you, I know people that do. I know people that have accomplished less in mainstream media than you and me that are blue checks. I know people that are just streamers. Like, isn't this. that or fascinating? If you've ever tried to look up the criteria for blue check, do you know what it easy. is? Yeah, it's pretty easy. 
No, I don't know what it is. Oh, yeah, no, I've, uh, it's pretty you easy. Just decide if we give it to you or not. It's like, well, do you have to reach like a certain level of followers or do you yeah. have to no, like no. have some sort of name for yourself or do you have to be employed by like another media outlet or something? They don't know. They don't tell you what the criteria is. They just decide whether or not. Bang. No, they they do. They tell you it's in the criteria isn't that hard, but you're right. It's just them. They just look at it and go, nah, <laughs> which, but I, I don't want to apply for blue check because I think the height of cool in this area, first it's of all. It's when you're given a blue check. Yeah. No, the height of cool is when you can get a blue check and you don't want it. I know a number of people who can be blue checks and they just don't want it. I'll give you a great example. Mike freaking Reiner. Mike they Reiner here in Dallas is a blue check. It. What? Yeah, they can give it to you if you don't want it. They can give you a blue check against your will. Oh, you can say you don't want it. You can say no. I would prefer not. Or you I, just don't apply for it. I, I didn't know that was a thing. I don't think you have to apply for it. I think they just give it to you, don't they? No, 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 no. You have to apply for it. It's a whole thing. You know, dude, there are people doing overnights at like tiny AM stations that get blue checks no because way. they apply for it. Of course. Yeah. I think that used to be the case. And then no, they got is. a little stricter on it because I knew some people that had blue checks and they lost them. No, they, they did. They got they got uh, very tight on it a couple of years ago, but they've seemed to have right. opened the floodgates recently again because there are people that are there are people that are just streamers like this that are blue checks. But hey man, as long as Mike Reiner doesn't want a blue check, I don't want blue check. I don't, hey, I'm gonna <laughs> beard, but I have the speakers on so I can still hear you. You can keep talking. Where are you going? All right. Hey, that's fine. Just, just to the cooler sure. on the other side of the room. I'm going to hear everything. Yeah. Uh, not true, Emily. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, Albert Gambo. What is a blue check? Uh, just verified. It's just, uh, it's like celebrity Twitter. You know, it's like, if you're you know, whatever, yeah. uh, because, uh, I'll give you, you know, I don't want to go into this. Anyway, I was explaining the story of what, Oh, look, my, I'm still, my notifications are still going up. People are still hitting me and hitting me and hitting me. Let's see. What are they mad at me about now? Let's see. I'll also say that, uh, Oh, P.S. This is the wrong approach to supporting women in sports. Hashtag a female sports reporter. Who's the blue check that gave me that one? Is that a blue check? Let me see. Uh, simple little uh, Megan. Who's Megan? Megan. Blue check Megan. Ooh, Megan is a stunner. Let's see. I should respond to Megan. Uh, Fox News. Okay, Megan is from Fox News and Fox Sports. Uh, hashtag uh, UFC. She works for the UFC. Journalist, Orlando, Florida. It's blue check. Beautiful young lady. Beautiful young woman sports reporter. She's coming after me. Uh, all right, so here's what I did. So this is uh, this this is this is what I did. And I don't want, I don't want to bog down the whole show on this because, quite frankly, I can do this every night. I'm always out there. If you're not following me on Twitter, Pugs and Co. on Twitter. I'm out there. I'm slugging it out. I'm fighting for us. I'm fighting oh, for no, us. Dude, I agree with you. Just trolling randos on the internet is so fun. I'm not troll, but I'm not trolling. I'm not trolling. I'm not. These are real. I never. Trolling is when you say something that you don't believe in, in the anticipation that you'll provoke people. It doesn't have to be something you don't believe in. It could be someone just going by like a trans blog and go going, boys have a penis and girls have vagina. Yeah. April knows my Aaron Andrews tweet. That that's what I'm, that's what, that's what I'm getting. <laughs> I will say this. I'm not getting ratioed. I mean, I'm like, I'm like a hundred. I'm, I'm like a hundred to one over, over the people that are coming at me. But for some reason, you know, I, you know, you just, you can't, you can't do it. Okay. So you want to hear, the, okay. So here's the tweet in question. Yeah. By the way, here's how this happens, James. You have to comment, you have to comment on something when it is just beginning to trend. If it's just starting to pop and if it's just starting to trend and you get one of the early, uh, uh, uh hashtags in, then uh -huh. you'll just, you'll see your shit. You'll see like, a hundred something likes and then you'll see like a hundred something forwards and you know retweets and stuff that's what you want it's a technique but it's not necessarily trolling so i saw that aaron andrews was 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 trending right so i had this uh i, I had this thought right i'm like oh aaron andrews is trending i don't even know why she was trending she's trending because she's sideline reporter right i guess that's it because she's, she's so she's such a talented sports journalist it, that's what i said 
Yeah, that's exactly what I said. She is. She's probably the best sideline reporter that there's ever been, male or female. Nobody asks the right questions to coaches coming out of the halftime like Aaron Andrews. That's why she's the highest paid, and that's why she's been doing it for two decades. She is truly great. You said that very sarcastically, like she's not. Nope. But her and Jennifer Hale are the top of the, that whole genre. Uh, I don't know about Jennifer Hale, but I would say Michelle Tarico is probably second. Michelle I'm, Tarico is I, really I, I, I'm, I'm really biased, though, because when I first started working in New Orleans, Jennifer Hale was at Channel 6 down here. And you kind of think that she's like kind of a dim, ditzy bimbo. And then, like, you go no, I don't think hang out with her with some mutual friends at a bar, and you're like, oh, you, you graduated <laughs> with the master's degree from Stanford, and you're just – incredibly beautiful and smart. Well, isn't your life just perfect? I, and I then she just rose right up the ranks, like right in front of your face. And you knew why she's freaking brilliant. And she looks like that. Now you're talking, you said Jennifer Hale, you, you're talking about Jen Hale, right? From college. Hale, football? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I know Jen Hale. Jen Hale's really good college football. Oh, Absolutely. Dude. She's great. Well, and you know how you and I, we go on our little rabbit trails when we're not on the radio, like talking about like Roman empire versus the Roman Republic and stuff. She'll run circles around us. Like we're idiots compared to this girl. And she looks a thousand times better than us. Um, I've said this before on the show and anybody listening in Chicago will know who I'm actually people in Dallas might know who I'm talking about because she started at the ticket. She was the ticket had no idea how to use her. She was a ticket update girl back in the, the early two thousands. Now she's like the highest rated sports talker in Chicago. Uh, Lila Rahimi from, from Denton uh, university of North Texas. She was started out as a ticket update. This girl is brilliant. Now, Look, it helps that she's beautiful. You know, she's she's beautiful and she started out on television and, and now she's doing talk radio in Chicago. But for a beautiful girl to have the acceptance that she got on sports radio has nothing to do with how she looks. It has to do with how good she is. She just happens to also be pretty. That's why she was on TV. But Lila Rahimi is the same way, man. She can talk about anything to anybody at any time. And she's uh, it's just so how good. amazing is it to be? Cause like all beautiful people can't be stupid. There's gotta be some smart ones right, out of, of there. Of and so in the Venn diagram and just that little sliver where it overlaps, you get to be one of those people. Isn't that great? Yeah. Isn't that like lucky, lucky dogs, man? Lucky. They, you know, the 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 life lottery. That's you know, when, yeah. you're and if smart you have to be, and beautiful. And if you happen to be great. born into money, I mean you've hit the trifecta. If you're smart, beautiful, and wealthy. Okay, oh wow, I know sky's the limit, right? Oh, please. What's gonna stop you? Nothing. Drugs. All right, so here's the tweet that I sent. I saw Aaron Andrews was tweeting, and I saw an opportunity strategically to jump. Stop saying. Oh, Leslie, God. all right. You know what? I will try that. If people, not you, because you know, I love you, but if people stop going for the jugular on well-meaning people, okay, just, just stop. Just acknowledge that sometimes well-meaning people are not going to be 100% right every time about the way they say things. Hey, I, <laughs> I'm you sorry. Know, actually, if you wanted to be the most respectful, <laughs> which would like translate. Was, 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 was almost like a male Adam. Hold on. She's like, a, uh, she's like a better looking male Adam or female Adam. <laughs> Cause she, Adam. She, like, she knows how to Adam Reyna. You know, my oh, okay. boy Adam. She knows how to set me up. She'd right. Like, she'd be a good drinking buddy. Okay. If you uh, wanted to be most respectful, you would be most formal. And linguistically speaking, in the English language, you would use the term dame. So, like, ma'am is madam, my dame. I'm just a regular dame. guy. I'm just dame. a well meaning dude. <laughs> and if you and if you don't like dame, if that's not good enough for you, the most formal, respectful term, then I'm going to go straight to broad. With a little money, she says. Stop it. <laughs> but I'm sorry, I'm distracted. Le Leslie's uh Leslie's a longtime supporter of the show. Uh, really I know like. she's a big fan of mine. Look at that. She loves No, me. she no, she is. That's just Leslie. She wants to tell you to fuck off. That's that's she's she's like a she's like a six foot blonde. You know, she's like she talk about, you know, she was born with all the she's really smart and she's pretty and she was born with all those things. And it's just she's she knows that she can talk shit and get people in trouble. And, uh, whatever. Well, here's the here's the interesting intersection. Emily says she prefers girl. So she's a girl and she prefers yeah, I, to be called a girl. Is it okay, Leslie, if I can refer to Emily as a girl? Is that okay with you? Like, how does that work? 
you can't you get, please everybody. Do you, you get to control have... my speech even when it's directed at a specific person who's already given me consent to use that term? No, Isn't no. that interesting? We I love these games. I love these semantic games because you can call me that. whatever. And I've, have I ever gotten mad at anything you've ever called me? I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I look, I, I just, I, it's about intent. It's not about execution. It's about what Thank you. Intent. I like that. I like you that. Know, please. All just, right. So the tweet. All right. So the tweet I sent, I saw Aaron Andrews was trending and I went, Ooh, she's trending right now. I should jump on. Do I have a take on Aaron Andrews? And so I tweeted, I see Aaron Andrews is twin trending. Maybe this is a good time to remind you all that she's been a skirt stuck on the sideline for two decades now, while men with half her talent, knowledge, and charisma have jumped over her straight into the booth. And I went, Ooh, that's going to be a good one. <laughs> I'm like, that's going to take off. And it did. It took off. But now I got blue check women, some blue check women supportive, you know, clicking the like and resharing and all that stuff. But I get a couple, got a couple who are like, while I appreciate the support, that's not the best way to help her. And I'm like, oh, God, I'm in no position to help her. I'm just a guy trying to point out that she's more than a skirt. The reason I use that particular word, and that's not even what they're getting mad at. But yes, that was a trigger word, and I used it on purpose because I'm good with my words like that. I know what I'm doing, and I've gotten you to bite, and now I have been triggered by something that I intended to happen all along, which makes me the lunatic. Yeah, because you use skirt actually to demean the people yes. that do not give her her due. It was about and point of view. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It was about, I, it was a switch up in the point of view in the middle of the take. And I think, and a lot of people got it. Like 217 likes at this point. It's only been up an hour. So, you know, look, it's, it's, it's working, but it's just, why do I let the people who I, I just, I don't want to get into it. So anyway, that's what I've been doing. I've been slugging it out. I've been muting people. I've been blocking people. <laughs> I've been responding to the nice people, you know? You make I any also, new friends? I, I also got into a fight with the guy who killed Bin Laden tonight. That's something else. <laughs> oh, uh, Robert, Robert O'Neill? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't, even know I don't want to get in a fight with the guy who killed Bin Laden. Eh, he said something dumb. Uh, <laughs> I said he was dumb. Uh, you know, just turned into a thing. And so, yeah. And then I stopped because honestly, I thought, wait a second, this guy killed Bin Laden. <laughs> oh, right. I should no, buy him a beer, not fight. No, with no, him. no, not because of that. This guy killed Bin Laden. He could probably have me killed pretty easy in the guest house here in the one percent or compound. Nah. It wasn't out of any respect or anything. As a matter of fact, I called him trained up retarded meat, which is not cool. I understand it's not cool, but he said something that was pretty short sighted and very, you know. Doesn't he get a pass to kill Bin Laden? It's like whoever cures cancer. Like, what if they go out and they do something like they accidentally get in a drunken car wreck and kill someone like Caitlyn Jenner or something? Yeah, maybe. You know, it would just let just let it slide, dude. He I'm Bin flawed. Laden. I'm flawed. I know it. I know I'm flawed. I apologize. I something like what if you were in an elevator? What if you were in an elevator and like Michael Jordan farted? You'd be like, you know what? I'm just gonna let it slide. I mean. It's you know, it's not that you're lucky you got to sniff his fart, but, Wait, you, give you know, me that again? give me that again. What, what if you were in an elevator and Michael Jordan farted? I call him out on it. That's an opportunity. Well, I <laughs> know. I ever for... tell you about the time I told Michael Jordan that he shouldn't have farted in the elevator? That's dude. You think I'm going to let that slide? Well, I know. But if you weren't, if your life wasn't for the purposes of radio bits, you would just let it slide. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Hey, all right. Hey, can I can I take you on a sidetrack? Because this will probably just take like three minutes, okay? Nah, go ahead. Whatever you want to do. I, All right, I'm, so, not, I'm not fully set up for the show today, so go ahead. Talk away while I get set up. Go ahead. I'm yeah, listening. so I had a little hiatus. I started watching The Last Dance, but um, my wife wasn't nearly as into the 90s bulls as I am. Hey, uh, did you know that I was there for all of that? I, was I know you. Oh, my God, yes. Oh my, that's how I know you'll like this. Producer for the Chicago Bulls back in the championship runs. I was right there on the sideline running cable. Go ahead. Oh, isn't that amazing? Anyway, oh, so it's a, um, it's a, it's a story for the grandkids. Dude, I, heard, I love all the I, stories I've heard. On. The ones I've heard, I love them. Hold on. I, I won't go into any stories, but I have heard, I have been, I have been within three feet of, of Michael Jordan in a huddle during a timeout, just tearing down his teammates, <laughs> just being super mean and being super mean to Phil Jackson. I was there for that. Go ahead. So cool. So cool. All right. So it was something that it took me a while to watch because 
after the first couple episodes, my wife's like, yeah, I'm not watching this with you. You can just watch it on your own time. And so I would watch it maybe here and there. She went to sleep before me and I still had an hour, you know, that I was going to be up doing nothing, which doesn't happen very often. But since she left and she has moved and I'm here by myself, when I go to Netflix, I can watch whatever the fuck I want. Right. So I finally got to finish it. And I'm sure someone's done this before. I just haven't seen it. But I like to try and the the two different three-peats that he did, the only common link between those two teams, Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. Wasn't everyone else turned over? And those there wasn't any other player that played across the divide on the three-peats? Well, there were interchangeable players. Like, Not, yeah. see, okay, okay, now, now that's yeah. exactly what I'm getting like, to. Like, because hold on, look, I'll give you an example. John like, Paxson and Steve Kerr, the they had their Paxson. analog. Exactly. It's okay, so does everyone have Horace their Grant analog? No, 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 Horace Grant would be Tony Kukoc, wouldn't he? No, 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 no. Uh, no, Kukoc was more. Uh, Horace Not was part right. No, no, no. Horace Grant was the big bodied defender, enforcer, rebound guy. And that's what the, when he left and went to went to wherever he went, Orlando, I think. Then they brought in Rodman. He, he scored too. He he was part of that. He he was dangerous, more dangerous than Rodman was. And Rodman's one of the tough one. He doesn't really have the analog, but um, like do the it's centers? Okay. Who's the centers? <laughs> oh my God! Well, it started out with Big Bill Cartwright, and then we went to Will Purdue and Luke Longley, and uh, we ended up with Stacy King. Uh, yeah, those were the centers. yeah, but but they didn't cross the boundary. Jack from Haley. The Jack first, Haley was there early. from the first three peat to the second three peat. No. There was no crossover, right? Yeah, no, nobody has all six except for Jordan and Pippen. I think. I think you're right about right. that. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, does anyone have the third and fourth one besides Pippen and Jordan? Because I think the, uh, that magic two years was all the turnover of everyone on the squad except for them. And it's it, the, the reason I care is from a point of view from a general manager or a coach. You had a puzzle piece that was put together and it worked and it won the championship. And so in, when you're in the rebuilding phase, you don't necessarily say, well, how can I rebuild a team as much as how can I replace John Paxson or how do I replace uh, BJ or how do I replace? Look at you knowing all Kukoc. the players. Look at you all I just all watched the last players. dance. It's not like it's not like I'm a genius. <laughs> I know I sound smart, but I just watched the last dance. So I was refreshed on all these people. But yeah, I, I, I just I like that idea that that kind of gives, you know, still all the credit goes to Michael and a lot goes to Scotty, but you know, from a general manager standpoint, there's sort of a money ball approach to it. At the same time, money ball was happening. Um, the guy who most people, I mean, look, jo Jordan is undisputed the, the, the X factor in that whole thing, but without Jerry Kraus, J Jerry Kraus, who was demonized by everybody, Jerry Kraus did a magnificent job of moving those players in and out of finding did he? guys. Oh, he did. He okay. absolutely did. How come he, he hadn't done it since? Well, he's dead. He's been dead for 15 years. Okay. That hurts. <laughs> that, that makes it hard. <laughs> he died. That's one thing. Yeah. When, when he, when he left the bulls in the mid two thousands, he was retired for like two years and then died. I mean, he he wasn't gonna do another oh. job. He wasn't oh gonna God. go to another Never team. Never mind. Yeah. What <laughs> What was your take on Kraus? Kraus and Jordan hated each other. Uh, they really did. Kraus yeah, but the okay. So the the thing is, I like we like to look at these patterns. You do the guy watching likes to look at these patterns and compare it to other dynasties because right now we're we're saying the same thing about the Tom Brady Bill Belichick split. It's like, well, if Bill Belichick doesn't do something and do it soon then all the credit for those the success that he had with Tom Brady will go more to Tom Brady than Bill Belichick. This is like it, all the credibility and all the awesome legend that he has built for himself gets eroded away if Tom Brady continues to be successful and he doesn't. And so I was just thinking that, that that's sort of the, the analog to the 90s Bulls situation. Well, I'll tell you what I resist. I resist the argument that if they hadn't broken up, the whole premise of the last dance was that it was prematurely ended. I I, yeah. I, re I reject the premise that they would have gone on for more and more years. I, I, I don't think that's the case at all. I think that that was pretty much the extent of it. And well, it was, we also saw two years after that, Michael Jordan comes back with the Wizards and he doesn't go kick ass and dominate and mop the floor with people. No, no. He did, at, the, at that point, that was the point in his career where he truly needed a Scotty. Where he truly needed a cook coach, where he truly needed somebody. Well, I mean, even if he had all of it, it'd really be really tough to do what he did. I mean, what people, he did was so freaking amazing. 
I'll, I'll tell you what I'd love to have seen. I'd have loved to have seen Michael Jordan play with Joe Kim Noah and Derrick Rose. I'd have loved to have ah. seen him still be on that team. That would have been awesome. You know, if, if he if he had stuck around and been been the guy to mentor them. But the problem is, and this is not a thing that all the people in Chicago know, but now apparently everybody around the world know. Uh, Michael Jordan wasn't a great teammate. <laughs> Michael Jordan. He's a jerk. He got right. a jerk. Yeah. yeah. Out of an asshole. <laughs> he is. Scottie Pippen's been getting into a lot of trouble lately because he's been talking out of school about, hey, you know, Michael was kind of a dick. And to be fair, he's right. But to be doubly fair, Scotty Pippen was also an abhorrent douchebag. <laughs> Scotty Pippen, that was not a likable team. Those guys were not likable. They weren't friendly and lovable. They played for, for Madison Avenue and for all the advertisements and the Gatorade commercials and the kids' movies. They played that. But in real life, those guys were kind of dickheads. They really were. Well, and, it, and it's been borne out. Uh, Dennis Rodman, not exactly known as Mr. Congeniality. Uh, Steve Kerr appears to continue his dick ways in further into adulthood as, as a coach. John Paxson doesn't seem incredibly likable either. I, you know, you're right. When you just go down the checklist, I mean, no. who's the nice guy on any Horace of those Grant. teams? Horace, yeah. Horace Grant is Horace beloved Grant. from those teams. I, Bill Cartwright is beloved from those teams. Okay. Uh, Will, Will Purdue is beloved from those teams. I mean, yeah. There, there that's are a guys. pretty short list, huh? Well, no. Uh, you said Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman is beloved in Chicago. Because oh, when, when all the other guys were like, you know, Scotty Pippen's nickname was No Tippin, no tippin Pippin. Because right. He'd go into a bar with like 50 of his friends, expect it all to be free. He had some, can I say, for you Dallas people, he had a little Michael Irvin in him. He had a little Deion <laughs> Sanders Michael Irvin in him where it wasn't. Uh, and there, was a, there was a famous story uh, that bartenders like to tell in Chicago of that time, of which I was a bartender in Chicago at that time. But uh, Scotty Pippen got up on a bar and said, these are all white bartenders. Don't anybody tip them. And sue me if I'm wrong but I'll produce 50 bartenders from that era who will say, yeah, no, that happened. And they can name the bar. So, you know, that's why he got the nickname, no tipping Scotty Pippen, because he was just a complete jerk about that. Uh, Dennis Rodman, however, is the guy who would walk into a bar for five minutes and tip everybody a hundred bucks and leave. De Dennis Rodman was a very nice guy and he was out in the public and he was walking around and taking pictures. Dennis Rodman loved being on those Bulls teams. Dennis Where Rodman is, is the, the type of personality that we've met at radio stations, but since they're not awesome at basketball, they're just bit monkeys and board ops. And like I, Dennis Rodman seems like someone who would just hang out with us and be our friend if he was a normal person and wasn't like an Adonis athlete. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it, the, the humbled athlete is one of the kinder athletes. That's for sure. The If you get the athlete who is one or two years out of the spotlight, who is now trying to break into media and he's got to do your radio show. That's a nice guy. That yeah. Guy right. Really yeah. Nice and real accommodating. But when you get athletes at the top, man, I'm telling you, you know, I've got my athlete pecking order of, of who, who the biggest jerks are. The, the biggest jerk athlete uh, is the major league baseball player. The, the star major league baseball player is the absolute biggest jerk followed very closely by the NBA player then the NFL player, then the NHL player is almost wonderful. Just about every NHL player, they're mostly just dumb Canadians who have no idea they're famous. So, you know, they're really nice. Then you get to the NASCAR drivers who almost all the NASCAR drivers are super kind dudes, super friendly, super normal, just good old boys. That's, that's for real. They might be arrogant, competitive dicks, but they know how to treat people in public. You know what I mean? And then uh, MMA, MMA fighters are almost across the board the nicest. Of, of all of them. But again, they're barely famous too. And I, the, the addendum to that, which I don't really include in that list because they're more entertainers are pro wrestlers. Pro wrestlers are wonderful. They're almost all of them to a man. When you meet him in real life, are you, the, the, the kindest celebrity that I've ever met or that I've ever been interviewed with. It actually, it's two people. It's a uh, Ron Howard which is no surprise to anyone. <laughs> Ron Howard is such a sweet guy. And nice. Mick Foley, uh, the wrestler, Mick Foley, just so incredibly kind and decent. I know Mick Foley. Sounds um, like I should know that name. Yeah, he was Mankind. And uh, he was, it, 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 Google him really quick. You'll know him. He's got the beard. He writes children's books now. He's like beloved by kids. 
He's uh yeah. Uh Bobby Hole was beloved here, hung out at the barn near North Park Mall. Yeah, Bobby Hole, the ambassador of fun. He was uh that was his official job title with the stars. Or no, Brett. Not Brett Bobby. Hall. Yeah, Brett Hall. Sorry, I get Brett and by Bobby was a Blackhawk. Brett was a star. Yeah, so there we go. That's the pecking order. Cactus Jack. Yeah, he, yeah. Um, uh, Mick Foley had a whole. Mick Foley is an icon of wrestling. He had a whole bunch of different characters. James, take it for a minute here. I got to refill my drink. I, uh, where, where's he going? You can't go away when I'm going to step away for like 30 seconds. Hold on. Oh, be right back. I mean, I'm literally going to be right back. Just got to go over here. Hey, how you doing? I got nothing. I was just waiting to do the monologue, as you can probably tell by the curtains and whatnot. Merry Christmas. We got nine more days until Christmas. That's nine more days, really, because that last day doesn't count. You really got eight more days to do a smash and grab at Neiman Marcus or Saks or something. I recommend a hammer. And really, you want to wear gloves. And it, it's not just it's not just for the fingerprints either. When you're doing your smash and grab robberies, uh, you want to wear the gloves because the little shards of glass will cut your hands when you're grabbing all the jewelry and the, the bags and stuff. And so you look, one hand is for the hammer. The other hand is for the, the, the grab, you know, the smash, the grab, and you got your pouch that goes around your neck. So you got eight more days till Christmas to get that smash and grab in. <sighs> I'm not a big fan of Christmas this year. I love it. What you love that I'm not a big fan of Christmas this year, or you no, love, I love Christmas. Christmas. He, well, I do too humbug. normally, but uh, you know, I, I got I got a kid and I'm on a budget, and I don't know how you do it. You got 15 kids. I mean, what does each kid get one present? I got one kid. He's expected to be spoiled, and I just can't do it this year. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, see, I I do really good because they're at the age where I buy them really stupid presents, and they love them. Oh, like not Xboxes for everybody. No. <laughs> oh my God, no. No, oh my God, no. No, like uh, for an example, my, my kids are six, eight, nine, and 11. So the boy that's eight, we, we um, they just moved to East Texas. They live in the country now. And okay. one of the things they like to do is walking through the woods. Well, coming from New Orleans, there hadn't been a whole lot of walking through the woods. And so uh, you need things. You need, you need supplies for that. So I got him. Um, he was really happy because my brother-in-law brought him a machete one time. And like we killed a snake with it and stuff. It was, it was fantastic. So he was he, he really loved playing with the machete. So I got him his own machete, except I didn't go to Walmart and get like, <laughs> you know, Fisher Price, my first machete. Okay. I got I went to I went to the Renaissance Fair last weekend and I got one that looks like the freaking Utrecht of Bebenberg was carrying it. Right. It looks like oh, some sort, like some sort of Anglo-Saxon. He's eight. He's going to love it. Oh, God. How awesome would it be if you got a machete when you were eight that looked like it was from medieval times? I'd stab myself. I'd, well, I'd no, uh, maybe it. once. No. But, but that's how you learn. Dude, my kid is 12 and I have to hide the lighters when he comes over. I, well, I, I would rather him have a machete because he's going to be walking through the woods. And seriously, um, not the last time we were walking through the woods, but the time before that with my brother-in-law, there was a big ass copperhead and he hit it with the machete. Actually, he tried to shoot it first and missed. And so we laughed at him. So then he hit it with the machete. How about just don't live near woods where there are copperheads? That's a plan. That's that's an option. I how, know. About don't, how about don't build homes anywhere near where copperheads are? I know. Are. I know. The outside world is scary. I want to say safe in my city. It's where I, It's ridiculous. Yeah, you, th you think you're better than me because you wear shoes every day? Is that what it is? <laughs> two, <laughs> things that, two things that Leslie has said. Uh, she made a reference to a hockey player's dad and called him an alcoholic. And uh, that is one of my hockey hot takes. And that is that all hockey players are alcoholics. Sue me. You got to prove I'm not right. You got to prove it's wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah, every, every uh, You know what? Here's what I'm going to say. Every Canadian hockey player I've ever met has been drunk. It, ah, is that fair? <laughs> every every. If Canadian, that's your experience, who am I to argue? Who am I? Yeah, sue me. Every Canadian hockey player I have ever met has been drunk. Therefore, vis-a-vis, -vis, to me, Every Canadian hockey player is an alcoholic. Uh, and two, she says, uh, Christmas is about being with your family. Yeah, I'm going to be all alone. I'm, I don't, I don't oh, get it. Hey, why don't, you come, why don't you come out to Tyler for Christmas? Ugh. Thank you so much for that kind offer. But ugh. not your family and not Tyler. Just the idea of being astray. 
I hate being a stray. Uh, we always take in strays, man. Well, I know, but I, and I went on and on about this over, over Thanksgiving. Uh, I was the stray this Thanksgiving and I had a wonderful time because a lot of this is just stuff that I've built up inside of me. I had a wonderful time on Thanksgiving, but when I was a kid, we used to have these big Thanksgivings at my aunt Margaret's house and the whole family would get together. Cousins, second cousins, uncles, great uncle. You know what I mean? It's just like everybody, people you only see once a year. And every year there was some weird pony hair haired dude who was sitting at the table, different one every year. He was that year's boyfriend of your aunt Connie. And you know, it was just like that dude was the stray. And I never want to be the stray because all the kids table talks about is how weird that year's stray is. And I don't want to be that. So. Yeah, that's I mean, what would happen. You we would... were a mean Irish family, so maybe that was just our family's experience cutting down the stray at the kids' table. But I won't be that guy. Uh, I'm not interested. Uh, Dino Cicerelli. Uh, yeah, Minnesota North Star. Yeah, I'm a Chicago Blackhawk, so I hate Dino Cicerelli. Never had a drink in his life. Wait, didn't I... he end up with the Red Wings? Dino Cicerelli? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I remember a fight. Him and Tom Lysiak got into Chicago Stadium back in the day. Dino Cicerelli. Uh, Emily's going to love this story. Why don't you tell it? She loves it when you tell sports stories. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, I won't. That's, that's not even. A, I will only waste your time with personal sports stories that I'm involved in. Or Dude, my, observations right. of current event sports stories. I, I won't just, you know, go off on something that happened on TV when I was 10. That's, All right. So I, I, I never watched hockey growing up ever. And then. When um, Super Nintendo came out and it had NHL hockey, I actually started playing that a lot. And it had the real rosters in there. And so there was this weird little era of my life for about five years where I knew everything about hockey, but it still never watched a game. I knew, <laughs> you know, Jeremy Roenick, you know, like if you walked in the room, I, would, I have no idea who he is, but I know he's the best player on the Blackhawks. He's their center and he's in their first shift and he is the bomb. Do I need to impress you again with my knowledge? Are you going to say Steve Smith or something? No, Premier League soccer. Uh, uh, my vast knowledge, having never watched a game, but all I do Playing is watch. Playing FIFA? No, I watch every Netflix documentary on the subject. Oh, <laughs> so, really? So I know all about how Premier League soccer works. Uh, I'm, I'm. Yeah, because you knew promotion and relegation. Of course, and I know oh, about the table, so and I know about the pitch, and I know about you know Queen's uh, Cup, the kit, yeah. and you know all of that stuff. Yes, I know about the Champions League. I know all about that stuff. I even have a team in the Champions League, which is Sunderland, and I have a team. Uh, my my team in the Premiership is uh is Man City. I uh, Pep Pep Guardiola is my favorite coach in in the league. I think that that dude has class and he has style and he's fun. And uh, I know that uh, I know that the relationship between Man United and Manchester City is very similar to the Cubs and the White Sox, where I come from. And Man City is sort of the White Sox to the Man U's Cubs. And so mm. I'm uh, I'm I'm loyal to Man. Yeah, I I can talk Premier League soccer. Never seen a game. <laughs> Never seen a game. I'm yeah. like, you know what I am? I'm like the Russian immigrant cab driver who just came over here, who knows everything about football because he's only been reading about it over in Moscow for 20 years, preparing for the day that he gets to come to America, but has never been to a Giants game. But he can tell you all about NFL football. That, that's what I am when it comes to soccer. I'm ready. What do you got? You got a? You got a thing? I can't read that. You've got like some well, of course you can't read that, but you can see the whole thing above my head where it says the monologue. Oh, oh you know what? I can. You know, you know what? You're you're good. You're good, James. I didn't think because you didn't send me a monologue cue sheet today. I I just sent it after the show started. I was uh, this is really stupid, but um, after work I went and met my hot mother in law for happy hour, God, that's and then so I weird. I know it is. Uh, it's 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 weird for me too. And then I came home and I was just playing Fortnite and all my friends were online. And so I was playing with like one of my actual friends in real life. And then a couple of my friends that I just see online. And so you're, you're, you're late for the show because you're playing Fortnite and I'm late for the show. Cause I'm arguing with people about how great Aaron Andrews is with girls who are also sports media members. Yeah. We're That's really stupid. Life. We're stupid. God, we're stupid. All right. Please welcome to the Cato Kalen Lounge here in the guest house, high atop the one percenter compound. He is the man of mirth, a global sensation, James Malcolm Parker. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, my God. Y'all are so nice today. 
All right. Uh, according to a new poll, only 18 percent of Americans want Hillary Clinton to run for president uh, compared to the 49 percent of Americans who want her to run into the nearest freeway. God, I, I couldn't I couldn't pull up the monologue quick enough. All right. Said whatever. OK, so go ahead. Next. Senator Elizabeth Warren is escalating her feud with Elon Musk. You see there in like a little Twitter beef. Yeah, I did. yeah last night, Musk's home was uh, struck by a flaming arrow. Because she's Indian, or maybe not. Who knows? Oh, she's definitely Indian. She did a test and proved it. Scientists say the first people will travel to Mo who who travel to Mars. They're going to be cooped up for 501 days in like this really tiny space. So part of the training regimen is they have to fly across the country on Southwest. Uh -huh. <laughs> that would suck. You didn't have to laugh. You don't have to laugh at all of them. Uh, according to a new poll, 50 percent of Americans think the country is divided. The other 50% think it isn't. Oh, I see what he did there. I see what he did there. Yeah, ratio humor. Uh, according to a new report, Chinese workers earn just $1.25 for each Disney doll that they produce in the factories. You know, they get the sweatshops going. Sure. But I don't know what the, I don't see what the complaint is. That's real good money for a seven year old. Look what he did. Look what he did. That's the one good one for today. Make All right. Uh, human tragedy right there. Uh, in New Jersey, a politically correct school district has banned Christmas carols. And uh, I feel sorry for the students. They have to live in New Jersey. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. I told you that was the one good joke before that. You should have enjoyed it while you could. And First finally, a bunch of woke scolds are now trying to get the uh, Christmas song. Do you hear what I hear? They're trying to get that canceled. Pug, did you hear about this? I did they not. say it's offensive to deaf people. Mm. Hey, there he goes. James Parker. Hi. -o. Look, that, real, that looks real cool when I hit the camera. Look, oh, I, can't. I can't. I, I've, I've got a different window open, so I'm not even looking at you. Oh, um, that's fine. It, that's, it looks uh, just trust me. It looks very cool. It looks so cool. I'm sure it does. Hey, you you want to do our moment of joy? This is something I like to do each and every show. I like to start out the show with a moment of joy, something that'll make you laugh, something that'll make you happy. Uh, today's moment of joy. Hey, uh, so Urban Meyer, yeah, that's a big story, huh? Yeah, he's got a good career going. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> the old ball coach uh, got himself fired. It's about time. Although, as I said earlier today, if you had money in Vegas on Matt Nagy being the first NFL coach fired this year, you lost which uh, sucks because I would have put all of uh, my five shekels on that. But nope, Urban Meyer got fired and uh, everybody's piling on. And uh, your moment of joy here is, uh, James, this is fun. And you know what? You know, I've been saying this for years. The dudes who are pot smokers never cease to amaze me. I am never like you could. I. You, you know, if I end up on a hunting trip with Ted Cruz and Ted Cruz pulls out so pulls out a one hitter, I'll be like, "Yeah, that checks out. That's that's pretty much that. That makes sense." After of what I've seen of the people that I have seen, I let's just say, hold on, how do how do I phrase this? Um, I know a judge who has I'm a fifty. Sorry, I just make fun no. of Leslie. I know a judge who has a grow room. <laughs> That's right. He's, he's a judge and he has a grow room and, uh, you know, apparently they don't, they don't weed test for judges and he's a very respected judge. I also, he doesn't know, have to pee in a cup. Oh, I, I did. Not. So I could play goalie at a dinky college in the middle of nowhere. I, I also know a very world famous neurosurgeon who is a big pothead, a neurosurgeon. This is this would be the guy who, if there was something wrong with it, you know, he would know, right? <laughs> like, but no, he's. I could give, no. I don't want to give any. I don't. What? He's, I kind of prefer my neurosurgeons to be nice and calm. Oh uh, well, yeah. You know, he has said as much. He he <laughs> said that right? it's, it's incredibly calming, and there's no. Now, uh, I have never heard him admit uh, to you know, being high when he cuts somebody's skull open. But I have had conversations with him where I've come away thinking, 
this guy operates on people stoned. <laughs> this guy gets high and then cuts into people's brains. He, he has certainly does. That. He has never said that. He is never. Certainly does. I want to make it absolutely clear. He is never. So, am I about to watch Urban Meyer smoke weed? Is that what yeah. you're saying? <laughs> well, first of all, look at his eyes. He's Let's all, do it. Okay. He's totally cashed out of his mind. His eyes are busted. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> Look at the old ball coach. The old ball. Okay, so here, let me set this up for you. This is from a couple of years ago, and it's resurfaced now because everybody's kicking him in the nuts. Because why not? Because it's <laughs> it's open season on Urban Meyer. So this is him doing a live. James, where'd you go? I hate when you do that. This is him doing a live. I know where he went. No, no, no. <laughs> That's fine. Go ahead. Uh, this is Urban Meyer doing a live interview with uh, the Big Ten Network. And uh, he is, it, it's in the summer. And apparently it's an interview about, uh, you know, wh whatever. It's about, uh, you know, what's, what's coming up at Ohio State this year. And so he's giving an interview while he's on a boat. I'm, I'm gonna wait for James to come back because I would like look at him when I give this description, so I know he's. Paying. I'm most definitely here. Okay, so he's on a boat, uh, probably his boat. Hey, look at him; he is his eyes are cashed. <laughs> he is just totally stoned. <laughs> this is your moment of joy because it's fun to kick Urban Meyer in the nuts, especially today. So he's giving a live interview to the Big Ten Network about the upcoming uh, Ohio State season, and. Uh, there is a mirror behind him. You see the mirror behind him <laughs> that is showing the opening to the boat? Oh, well, this gets interesting because that oh, means yeah. there's an accident about to happen. No, that means one of his dirtbag lake friends, because if this is in Columbus, Ohio, this is definitely on some shady Ohio lake nice. <laughs> you know, where, where, where rules don't apply. You're going to see his shirtless lake rat dude, buddy, walk in, take pick up a bong... <laughs> <laughs> and then start ripping a bong. And at some point, the old ball coach realizes what he's doing and that he's on TV and he panics for a moment. The old ball coach freaks out and the dude doesn't stop. You heard the dude go, and then you hear yes. him cough. All right. All right so let's get me. into this. this. Be great. This is your moment of joy. The old ball coach partying it up on a lake. Oh, his eyes are so cashed. Here we go. She seems to be about the right thing. So, you know, it's not your time as a coach or player. Here really he comes. See him in the background? Serious as pandemic and medical causation. I'm hearing those words of litigation and, you know, future issues. So you just got to trust. The All right. So just so we're clear, shirtless lake rat dude has no idea there's a mirror there. Here's the back of Herb's head. Okay. So the mirror is showing him show up. All right. The people care and love you and uh, go about your business and train as hard as you can. If there's a season, there is. If not, and you're a senior and get ready for the NFL, you got to do that too. So, you know, we live under the world of P plus R equals O. That means you can't control the events in your life. You can control how you respond. Respond positively and move forward. would be as a coach next step is i know you talk a ton okay did we catch that <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> did we did we catch him realize that his buddy sparky is about to pull off the bong while he's on live tv and he panics thinking nobody's nobody's gonna notice me momentarily freak out what would be as a coach give us a sense of kind of what that Hear next it? step is i know you talk a ton about response you talk a ton about the psychology of okay <laughs> do we need to hear it again the audio isn't great but did you hear the gurgle 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 and then him go <coughs> james oh no i think we need to hear it again we need to hear it one more time okay yeah Sorry, we, we definitely do Look, it's for it. science it's for science all right now you, you need just after he panics and freaks out Okay, I'm going to turn up my headphones a little bit. Turn up your headphones. You you do it the same, but you're right next to it because you can't hear it because, first of all, the recording's not that good. What you're listening for is right after he freaks out because he knows this dude's about to spark up while he's on live TV, you will hear gurgle, 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 and then you'll hear. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> and it's beautiful. I've just got to hear it again. I've it just got to hear it again. All right, so here we go. 
and you're a senior and get ready for the NFL, you got to do that too. So, you know, we live under the world of E plus R plus O. That means you can't control the events in your life. You can control how you respond. Respond positively and move forward. Now, so what would be, as a coach, give us a sense of kind of what that next step is. I know you talk a ton about the response. You talk a ton about the psychology of sports. She seems to be about the so <laughs> You heard that time? time. <laughs> oh, I heard it the first time. I just want to hear it again. Oh, so he, oh, okay, so I, here's a good game to play. What's his name? I think his name might be Scott, but he goes by Scooter. And then they might have shortened it to Scoot at this point. Or it might be something close to that, like a Skeeter. That's cool. But what's his role? That that's what I'm like. What, what is his role in Urban Meyer's universe? He's not a player. Look at him. He's probably not a fellow coach. I believe because Urban Meyer owns a number of bars. I bet you he's one of the bar managers, one of the dudes that runs Urban Meyer's tap house. You know where he had the grindathon with uh, with uh, came in Nebraska that was videotaped. <laughs> that's that's bar manager material to be hanging out on Coach Herb's boat. <laughs> yeah, but bar ma- do mar- bar managers get to hang out on the coach's boat? This is like yeah, this, yeah, because it's the, it's the bar manager who makes sure that all the hot waitresses show up for the boat party. Absolutely, the bar. Yeah, manager. but this is, could also be like his little sister's husband or like a nephew. No, no, he doesn't do this around. No, me. no, he did. This is Urban Meyer has a secret life. I mean, that's obviously we learned that when he told the world that he didn't fly back home with the team so that he could hang out with his grandkids. And then his wife was Instagramming pictures of her giving the grandkids a bath while Herb was at his bar getting grinded on by Cayman, Nebraska. Yeah. <laughs> we, smacking we fannies. Yeah. Good point. Good. All good points. All good points. Yeah. This is, this is where he's just going out on the boat to talk strategy with a couple of recruiters. That's, that's what he told the family here. And, and you've got the bar manager and a bunch of waitresses and a bunch of beer tub girls and they all came not because urban urban can't be out there dragging them out on his boat they need the bar manager to do it they need the that's that's what that guy is and that guy's name is kenny or doug it's i was was leaning toward kyle kyle could be good Kyle, yeah yeah or he could have that 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 sort of half white name like a cooper you know could be cooper a cooper is a good one yeah yeah uh, his, uh, he's his dealer or fluffer. Um, I know not, not his dealer. The dealer does not get that kind of access. Uh, herb keeps uh, insulated from the actual people who are dealing the weed and stuff. That's the other reason the bar manager is there because the bar manager brings the weed. The bar manager is the guy who gets the weed and brings the weed so that herb can have access to the weed without having to deal with. You think urban Meyer is driving to some sketchy apartment and sitting on some pot dealer's couch while he's in the back room (laughs) weighing out an ounce for him. (laughs) Herb ain't doing that. That's what he's got Kenny for. (laughs) <laughs> that's that's what that's really Kenny's main job, and uh, you know, make it legal like he just made him the bar manager. Yeah, and, and and you don't have to do that ever again for the rest of your life if you're Urban Meyer. Yes, he he was right. filmed uh, with missing fingers <laughs> when he was grinding when 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 came in Nebraska. Who's counting? What are you a lawyer? God. Yeah, no, man. I know. I know enough of these guys. Uh, certainly, I wouldn't say I know anybody at the level of an Urban Meyer because he is a one of the top one percent of of sports personalities in this country. He's he's a multi NCAA champion. So I I couldn't say that, but I I do know people of a certain level who have you know multiple layers of insulation between them. And the dirt bag who's going to get pulled over with a trunk full of weed, who's going to say, hey, man, you know who one of my clients is? Just to get a little bit less. Herb, Herb doesn't need that kind of smoke. He doesn't. He's, he's got Kenny, the bar manager, to handle these kinds of things for. Him. That's Kenny is the guy who works the down market. Uh, Kenny is the guy who works the down marker at the home games. Okay, maybe. Yeah, he, that might be a perk that Kenny gets to do. He gets to stand on the sideline and, and carry the chain or something like that. Absolutely. It's look, it's good being, it, it's good being urban Myers t- uh, turtle. It, uh, it's gotta be. <laughs> I don't think there's any overlap between the guy who gets some weed and smoking a bong on his boat. And the guy who's holding the first down markers at the home games. Cause I see that whole first down marker as part of this whole referee kind of cartel. And that has to be its own little subculture within itself because no little kid when they're, 
growing up says they want to be a first down marker holder. If if, if you are drawn toward the <laughs> officiating realm, you want to be the referee, the umpire, at least the back judge. So these guys are not at the pinnacle of their you know aspirations when they're holding the first down marker. They want to make it onto the field. Yeah, I don't know. Is that the case? I don't know where those people come from. I just assume that they're friends. No, <laughs> it's it it's it look, it's much in the way in a street fighter when you just start picking up jobs that are happening down the road. You know, you like ref like a rec league or a semi pro game, or then you get to the high school games, and then you could do like college games where you start at JUCO and work your way up to D one. But there's all these other people that are trying to do it at the same time. So it's not just based, it's not like a total meritocracy. You also got a bunch of backstabbers and you got a bunch of yeah. sharks in there that you're swimming with. And oh, yeah. so it, it's, it's a lot of hard work and a little bit of luck. And maybe you can work your way to the top. And uh, I, I, I don't discount the guys who are working uh, the, the down marker at the home games. If you're doing this for the Jacksonville Jaguars, I don't think you're going to take a chance with your career so much so that you'd be ripping a bong on Urban Meyer's boat. I uh, would like to apologize to my guy, T uh, Kenny Jenkins, who I think is feeling a bit attacked. <laughs> it was not personal. <laughs> I just thought of a name that that guy could be. And I thought Kenny sounded like a good name for him. If, for, if, if it makes you feel any better, I'll settle on Doug. D Dougie is, is another good one. He could be Dougie, the guy who manages his bar. I don't believe we have anybody currently in the chat room named Dougie. Uh, and Leslie says, uh, in regard to uh, Dougie, he's Southern, arrogant, stupid. He's a backstage hanger on. Well, yes, but here's the thing. I don't think he's Southern, arrogant, stupid. I think he's Ohio stupid. And that's a, that's a whole different thing because this took place when he was uh, you know, head coach at Ohio State University. So, Well, where's that line? Does rural Ohio still count as Southern? Because uh, I, I know the big cities wouldn't. No, it doesn't. Ohio is Midwest, but it you know it borders Kentucky, so it's a fine line. Well, from what I hear, like Pennsylvania is Philadelphia in the east, East Pittsburgh in the west, and Alabama in the middle. Yeah, that's what people say. I don't Do they know have accents though? Do they true. talk like me or they talk like you? Well, people in Philadelphia have much different accents. Well, no, not Philly because Philly is only like a hundred miles from New York. It's basically a suburb, man. Well, I didn't no, know. But I I'm forget how close those are, but like in the middle of Pennsylvania, do right. they have a drawl? Do they? No, no, what what they have is a combination of the Philly accent, which is similar to a New York or East Coast accent, Rocky and, a, Balboa. Yeah. and a Pittsburgh accent, which is, um, uh, well, I'm trying to think of somebody famous from Pittsburgh. The Pittsburgh accent is very funny. The Pittsburgh accent is very funny. And the people in the middle, no, they, now they don't talk like this in like central Pennsylvania, but they sound like a weird hybrid of the East coast and the, and, and the here I'll, I'll give you, why not? We're doing this. Cause honestly, uh, one of the people don't really recognize the Pittsburgh accent. I don't is, know the Pittsburgh accent. I do not know. One of the funniest. Accent. There you go. Pittsburgh accent. Okay. It is one of the funniest accents out there. Uh, let's see here. All right. So here's, okay. So this is a uh, Joe Manganiello from uh late night with Seth Myers. Okay. Uh, well, okay, no, maybe we'll do this one. This one says the most authentic Pittsburgh accent ever. Bro, oh, you got a Han Solo shirt on? Or should we do Schittsburg? Should we do Sch Schittsburg Pittsburghers say Pittsburghies? I, I, I don't appreciate your foul language, sir. Let's, let's do this one. Okay. So this, we'll see if this is good. Yes. Uh, so, okay. Let's see if we can show this. It's spinning. Oh. He's got cheese. Okay, here we go. Yeah, okay. Okay. This guy's this guy's got it down. All right, we'll share it. Uh the, the Pittsburgh accent and the Baltimore accent are my two favorite American regional dialects. Baltimore's not a thing, is it? Oh, Baltimore's a big thing. Coach Matt Nagy has it. Ooh, it's almost Canadian the way they say they're used. All right. In the middle. Hey, check off driving 50 mile an hour. I'm an Astons, guys. Just one last time. I'm an Astons, you guys. Yeah, that's very Pittsburgh. We used to loaf down Mary. Lose to my wife. Got kicked out for sliding down that fireman pole. For crying out loud, it's cold up here, Mount Washington. You're supposed to put a gun banner on it. My grandma Paul, used to live next door, Marco. Yin's beating quarter of four down at the Kaufman's clock. Hey, hey. Yin's guys just need to cool down and cut it out. <laughs> Yin's guys. I rode the trolley once from the Van Halen concert down in the arena over there at Station Square. I, I couldn't figure out how to pay to get off of them. So it's in the bank. You didn't see that landslide down there on McCarter Roadway and that. Whatever happened, Joey Billy? How's come Yin's drive so slow in the tunnel? 
All right. I met my wife. Yins. There you go. Yeah, just a, a, there's definitely a Pittsburgh thing. Yins. All right, now I'll give you I'll give you Baltimore because ba- Baltimore is a fun one. Um, the cops on the wire, not necessarily the actors who are portraying Baltimore cops, but the actual Balt, the uniformed cops in in the show The Wire were actual Baltimore cops, especially the. Uh, like uh, the guy who would get do the, you know, all the cops get together in the classroom before their shift. And then the cop goes over everything that's going on in their area. That guy was great. That that guy, that guy was definitely a Baltimore cop. Baltimore, Baltimore accent. All right, let's look at this one. Right, Baltimore accent compilation. The Orioles and Baltimore accents. Okay, let's see. There was a Baltimore accent viral video i saw maybe a month ago it's about ooze it's about o's or o's yeah i think it's O's. and they were making fun of the r because it was like aaron iron um air it it was like four words but you say them the same if you do the i don't know there's your ad all right let's do this one this is the baltimore accent but uh, like, you know, everybody leans on the Chicago or the Boston or the New York, right? Or the Southern, which every Southern state does not have the same accent. There are very, the Texas accent is actually pretty elegant compared to like Mississippi or Tennessee. Uh, all right, here you go. The the Texas Southern belt or the Texas Southern gentleman is one of the most beautiful accents. Here we go. <laughs> Keith, I just love these uts here on the stoop. You got any old bay on those uts? Some people here say we talk funny. We have an accent here in Baltimore. Us? I never heard that. Let's go talk to some folks, find out. Let's do it. Cross Street Market in South Baltimore. That's a good place to go. Baltimore. Hunt's your Baltimore accent. Yes. I, I noticed it very much because I came from New York. It is, it is a very much of a Baltimore accent. There's the Hans. Hey, Han, how you doing? <laughs> and yours. Hello! <laughs> What Baltimore accent, hon? I ain't got one. No, we don't talk one. One thing's for sure, when diehard O's fans get to talking, it's O's. hard to get them to stop. That's it. It seems like over the years, though, um, going way back to Mill Pappas and all, uh, pitching has been our weak side. So we really need to have a good pitching set. I remember National Bow. I, I was raised in that part of town. And years ago, a friend of mine and I used to run together. And we go to the ballpark for 25 cents on the bus. So how many Natty Bows could you drop in a game? I, don't, I didn't drink. I was that young. <laughs> but that was when uh, Bailey Goss. Remember Bailey Goss? Yeah. Both was unique to itself. I fit in, I guess, now after 40 years, but I don't have the accent that most of the old timers have. O R I O L E S Oreo. Oh. Oh, will they win today? So here we are, hon, back on the stoop. What better way to get ready for the game than a burger cookie? I'm not you know tired what? From Man, what I'm Manny Machado designed these burger cookies. Mm, you're good. Cheers, hon. Okay, cheers to you. All right, so that's what it is with them. It's like they're ooze. Like it's it's not the Baltimore Orioles, it's the Baltimore ooze. Ooze. And uh Matt Nagy, coach of the Chicago Bears, has that accent really bad. <laughs> like, like you can't say uh he he talked once about eating a bag of peanuts, and of course, local radio, sports radio jumped on it because it sounded like he said he was eating a bag of peanuts. <laughs> Because he can't say peanuts correctly because he's from Baltimore. So when they say peanuts, it sounds like penis. Uh, I can't do the accent because I'm not around it enough. But yeah, so there's definitely uh, there's definitely different accents. And then, you know, you know, what another one of my favorite uh, completely under the radar accents is Minnesota. Minnesota, the Minnesota accent, it's 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 almost like, you know, uh, the Wisconsin accent. It's kind of like Wisconsin, but the Minnesota, and you know, Minnesota, I guess, made famous by Fargo. Fargo. Show, I was not that familiar with the Minnesota accent before oh. I saw Fargo. Cry and that I, yeah. movie is so good. It makes me want to just go hang out with those psycho people, man. They oh, look, yeah. Oh, you know, no so matter cold. what, you can't sound like you've got an education when you've got that Minnesota accent. The Minnesota accent is very similar to the one in, in uh, Wisconsin, but Wisconsin is a little bit more, you know, it's got more of like the Chicago thing in it. But Minnesota is almost like Canadian meets Chicago. No, it's like Norwegian meets Chicago. It's weird, whatever it is. It's, it's like weird. the Swedish chef from uh, the the Muppet shows. Like, heard you, heard you, heard you, heard you. <laughs> 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 
That's what it sounds like to me, man. It sounds bad. Well, the reason we're the reason we're talking about Minnesota is because uh, you know what I've been watching all week. Have you been watching this Officer Kim Potter trial? No, I hate this story. Why, this... why do you hate this story? Why do you tell me now? Tell people what you know about the Kim Potter st- uh, story. Man, here's best or, or case, maybe, or maybe because of your uh, perspective on this, it's the Dante Wright story. But yeah. uh, Kim Potter's the officer on trial. It best case scenario, this lady meant to pull her taser and stun a guy that was pulling off and she accidentally pulled her gun and just shot a dude who was trying to leave a traffic stop okay uh kim potter that's best case scenario worst case scenario she's a bloodthirsty racist murderous monster who's been hiding behind a badge and just waiting for a chance to gun some guy down the first time she got spooked now there's (laughs) there's a spectrum between those two conclusions that's probably the truth but neither one of those is is a great outcome. So this is just a lose lose story. There's no good outcome to the, this trial period. There is nothing authentically happening in this trial that supports in any way, shape or form the scenario that you just put out there, that she is just a bloodthirsty, crazy killer person. I mean, that's why she's it's manslaughter. This isn't like uh, Derek Chauvin who sat there calmly with his knee on George Floyd's neck. And, you know, there was an argument to be made that he was just a sicko, that he was a sadist, that, you know, he knew that the dude was in trouble and he just, he didn't care. So that's a whole different thing. Everybody, uh, even, even the, the, the prosec- the state prosecution, although I'm telling you this Keith Ellison, who is the state's attorney in, in Minnesota is a real problem here. I mean, you want to talk about a dishonest broker. He's Nobody a nation of Islam blacktivist. Well, okay, that's what he, some people say. Okay. But no, he is. He is. Yeah. He's like a converted Muslim guy who that's his that's his jam. A prophet Elijah Muhammad, all that stuff. Well, I don't well, okay. Yeah. Um I, I don't like his I don't like his takes here on this particular situation. I don't like his takes. On, uh, I, you know, I don't like Amy Klobuchar's. I, I don't like the the governor. I, I sure as shit do not like Al Sharpton's or uh, Ben Crump, who is the seems to be the default attorney for any of these cases. Oh, well, he's the attorney for the NAACP. The, the, basically, the, the absolute uh, thing that almost everyone agrees on thus far in the case is that it was an accident. That she's not some bloodthirsty murderer. However, even with that said, they are acknowledging that she did not. And this is what, uh, okay, so here's the story. Just for those of you who don't know, we're getting ahead of here. Uh, jury selection began on Tuesday in the crowd. This is from last week. In the trial of Kim Potter, the former police officer from Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, who said she mistook her handgun for her taser when she shot and killed a 20-year-old black man named Dante Wright. Potter, who is white, which I don't know why they felt the need to put that in there, faces two man The whole reason church. they're talking about it. Exactly. You're right. You're right. That the story is really disgusting on, on many levels. It's sad. It's a tragic situation, but the way that it has been turned into something that I don't think it is. And I've been studying this pretty closely the last couple of weeks. I remember when it happened, I was shocked by it, but then I ended up watching this whole long body cam video of the situation. And uh, we'll, we'll get into my thoughts on it. Uh, both prosecutors and defense lawyers agree the shooting was an accident. All right, so there you go. That's what I was referring to before. Both prosecutors and the defense attorneys agree the shooting was an accident. But prosecutors, led by Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison, say Potter's action were criminally negligent. Defense lawyers have argued that because Wright was resisting arrest, a use of force was authorized and that poor Potter was not consciously aware that she was holding her gun and is therefore innocent. The shooting occurred at the Minneapolis area or in the mini, excuse me, the shooting occurred as the Minneapolis area was already on the verge, on the edge over the trial of Derek Chauvin, the former police officer who murdered George Floyd. His trial was then taking place about 10 miles away. After Wright's killing, days of protests roiled Brooklyn Center, a a diverse inner city ring uh, suburb just across the city border from Minneapolis. Okay, so here's what happened on the shooting. Uh, April 11th, 2021. On the afternoon of April 11th, Potter was training a new officer. How, how ironic is that? She was training a guy and she's the one that made the huge 
life ending. Yeah, this whole story screw up. sucks. Yeah. It does. On the afternoon of April 11th, Potter was training a new officer. Together, they pulled over a white Buick. Uh, Dante Wright was driving, and his girlfriend was in the passenger seat. The trainee, Anthony Lucky, another <laughs> odd, odd name for the story, the officer trainee, Anthony Lucky, told Wright that he had been stopped because of an air freshener that had been hanging from his rearview mirror. This is a minor traffic violation in Minnesota and because his license plate tabs had expired, according to the criminal complaint. Now, let me just tell you about this. Boy, did they run with this. When this happened, this is where the whole driving while black thing came about. He was stopped for having an air freshener hanging from... That is not why he was stopped. And if you watch the, the raw police video, they make it perfectly clear why he was stopped. He wasn't stopped on some nuisance charge of having an air freshener. He was stopped for the very real reason of having expired tags on his cars. Now, here in Texas, we don't have tags, so you may not understand this. But in Illinois, we do have tags. And every year, you have to pay 100 bucks to get your new updated tags. And if you don't get, it's got a little date. Like, uh, if you look at my car, my car still has Illinois plates on it. I've, I've got a brand new one that says uh, 10 of 22. It's just a little tag that says 10 22. And that means those plates are good until October of next year. Now, in the Chicago area, a state that has tag enforcement, if you are driving around with expired tags, you are 100% guaranteed to be pulled over. You will get pulled over because that's a revenue generator. They will write you a ticket and you will be on your way. The idea that in the early days of this story that Ben Crump and Al Sharpton went on TV claiming that he was pulled over for an air freshener is absolute bullshit. It is disgustingly misleading. There is a very real issue in this country pertaining to these kinds of situations. But this was certainly not one of those issues. What what was this situation? In my estimation, it was a horrendous mistake. But to pretend that this officer, Kim Potter, is somehow in league with uh, Van Dyke in Chicago, who gunned down Laquan McDonald while he's walking down the middle of the street, pulled his gun, held it out the window of the car, and went boom, 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 and shot him in the middle of the street when he was doing nothing. Or Derek Chauvin, who we watched put a knee and sort of sadistically let the life drain out of George Floyd. To say that what happened here with Kim Potter is in a league with those is just not true. Kim Potter fucked up. And there were tragic circumstances because of her fuck up. But to punish her and treat her in the same way that you treated a couple of obviously bad cops is completely unfair. Should she be a police officer anymore? No, you don't come back from this kind of... Is there someone dead? Yeah, there is someone dead. Is that a tragedy? It absolutely is a tragedy. Does she deserve to go to jail for the rest of her life like people are protesting, demanding? No. It was a mistake. It was a tragic mistake and she should lose her career and there should be other things. But this is not the kind of thing where she intentionally murdered someone like we've seen in other instances. And now we've got these people, the Ben Crumps and the Keith Ellisons and the Amy Klobuchar who call both, both Al Sharpton and Amy Klobuchar called Dante Wright a prince of our community. Now he's dead and that's tragic and he was 20 years old, but there is absolutely nothing that backs up the idea that this 20 year old was a prince of the community. Now, now what happened? You know, I'm just going to tell you, cause I don't want to read the story. So he gets pulled over for not having proper tags, which is something that in my life experience will get you pulled over every single time. Cops are looking for that shit. They, that's a reason to pull anybody over. I have been pulled over multiple times and given citations for it. It's not a big deal. It just sucks because it costs a hundred bucks to get your tags done. And now you got a hundred dollar ticket on top of it. And if you didn't have the money to get your new tags, now you're, now you've doubled the hole that you're in. And that's bullshit. And another argument about how cunt, counties and cities and states use that money to sort of, you know, buy their tanks and, you know, their cool ass weapons. But that's not the argument we're having here. He got pulled up over for a perfectly legitimate reason. He didn't get pulled over for driving while black. Now, 
when the trainee officer approaches the window of Dante Wright, and we see this on the body cam video, the first thing he says to him is the, the air freshener. He mentions the air freshener, but then immediately says, but that's not why you're, you're, you're pulled over because what's up with your tags. And then you hear from Dante, Wright, Oh man, I, uh, you know, I was going to get him. I was, I, I was on my way to getting him. You know, I was, you know, I just, I need, you know, that's what everybody says. It's the thing that everybody says. So the trainee officer, officer lucky is like, all right, man. All right. No, it's not a big deal. He doesn't say it like that, but basically this is what he, the vibe he's giving. It's not a big deal, dude. He goes, that's fine. Just let me give me your license. And he goes back to the car. Like everybody does, right? Yeah, you, everybody gets pulled over. You get run. That's part of getting pulled over. The kid had no tags and he had no driver's license, uh, no insurance as well. So, I mean, look, there's all kinds of things. He shouldn't be out there driving around. Does he deserve to be dead for that? Absolutely not. That is not what I'm saying. But we're talk, we're taking this step by step. So they go back to the car and they run his name and the trainee officer does something wrong. You see this all in the body cam Tra training officer does something wrong and nothing shows up. And that is when officer Potter says, no, no, that's not how you cross reference a name. Cause remember she's teaching him and they do it again a second time in a different way. And it pops up that he has an active warrant that was just issued two days earlier for a weapons charge. Okay. He was caught with a weapon and he ran from police with the weapon, and uh, then uh, I guess they arrested him or whatever. He, he bailed out, and he had a weapons charge, and he had to go to court for the weapons charge, released on his own recognizance. Well, he didn't show up for court. So what happens? A bench warrant gets issued. This happens to everybody. This is not driving while black. Now, I'm not saying that driving while black isn't a real thing, because I believe that there are racist cops out there. Hell, I know a few and have run into a couple. But this is not that. So remember, he gets pulled over because his tags are expired. That's the reason he's pulled over. Then the cop talks to him and he doesn't have a driver's license. He doesn't have uh, insurance and his tags are expired. And he's also got an, an illegal air freshener. But that's not the reason he was pulled over. He was pulled over because of the tags. Also, the car reeks of marijuana. That's another thing that the cop says when he gets back in the car. The car reeks of marijuana. So they run him. It comes up that he's got an active warrant for a gun charge. Okay. This is an active warrant. They are looking for him because of something he did involving a gun. Then it also turns out that he's got a prior, uh, uh, I don't remember what the exact charge was, but basically like a stalking charge. Like there's, there, he, he did something to a woman and he's not allowed to go near her. And they have, you know, put this charge on him where, you know, whatever that charge is called, I'm not entirely sure. And I'm trying not to just read this because I think it's better if I just talk about it. So now he's got that as well. And then they find out that he has a prior from 2019 of armed robbery on a woman where he used a gun, pointed it to her head, and stole the money that was in her pocket, okay? So this kid's 20 years old. These are all of his priors, and he currently has no plates, no driver's license. What? No, 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 ah, ah. Isn't he a prince? He's a prince of the well, community. That's what, that's what Al Sharpton called him at his funeral, at his memorial service, when the cameras were on, and that is what Amy Klobuchar echoed in a speech about this whole thing, a prince of our community. So come on. Now, none of these justify him being dead. However, there are people that are doing their damnedest to turn this into something that it is not. Okay. So this is why he's being arrested, not because he's driving while black and not because he has an air freshener. So officer lucky, the trainee goes over to the car after finding all this out and finding out that he's got an active warrant and he has to be arrested. That's what an active warrant does. <laughs> if you've got an active warrant, you're going to be arrested. So they pull him out of the car and they put his arms behind him. And he starts to explain to him in a very nice manner. You can watch the video. It's on YouTube. He starts to explain to him what's happening and why it's happening. And, you know, just relax. And all of a sudden, the kid pulls away, jumps into the car and begins to try and drive away in the car. Now, remember the gun, the weapons charge that he's got a bench warrant for. He also tried to run from police. So, so they knew that this is something that the prince of the community does. He, he runs. He's from a police. runner. He's a runner. He's a, he's a runner. So 
Enter Officer Potter, who during the skirmish uh, reaches to her right and pulls out what she believes is her taser. It's not her taser. It's her gun. And in the video, you hear her say to, to the other officer, move away, I'm tasing. And she yells, taser, taser, taser. And then boom, fires a shot. And she immediately goes, oh my God, that was my gun. Oh my God. And you watch the video and she's, she's not, ha ha, I got one. She is decimated. She collapses to the ground. She curls up in the fetal position. She starts crying. She starts screaming. She made a deadly mistake, maybe because of her training, maybe because of whatever. I don't know. But it's not because she went out hunting black guys who were driving. And that is exactly how a certain segment of the community is portraying this. And they want her to hang for the rest of her life. She was a bad cop, not she was a bad cop in that she was obviously poorly trained. She couldn't recognize her right from her left. So what happens after he's shot? So after he's shot and she collapses and officer lucky sees that she's collapsing and she's freaking out the kid with a bullet in his side gets into the car and speeds away with the ramming head first into a family coming the other way. Now you see this in the video, you see the officer, Lucky, the trainee officer, is now concentrating on his partner who is in a complete emotional meltdown over this tragic mistake that she just perpetrated on this kid. She is not, oh, I'm fine. She is obviously emotionally destroyed and completely freaked out by this horrible, horrendous, unforgivable mistake that she has just made. But Dante Wright drives away, slams head first into an SUV that's coming the other direction. Uh, I said family. I don't know that's a family. I know it was a woman. And I think there was a woman and like her, her husband or something like that. So maybe not kids, but I, I don't know. It doesn't matter. He then endangers other people, causes a terrible accident. He later dies. Now, this police officer served honorably for 26 years. She had commendations. She was considered by everybody to be one of the good cops, a, a female police officer who was, you know, for all the arguments that we heard, we need more of those. We need less macho toxic masculinity and we need more women who use their brain. She made a tragic mistake. She killed somebody on the job because either her training wasn't up to snuff or she just wasn't really good at what she was doing. But the thing that drives me nuts about this is that she is not a murderer. She was not out for blood. And I am sorry to say Dante Wright was not a prince of the community. He's dead. And that's a shame. He shouldn't be dead. This could have been avoided, but it wasn't. But handle it properly. James? Well, the adult thing in a fa the face of a tragedy like this is to ask the questions, is there anything we could do to prevent this sort of human tragedy from reoccurring? Because one thing that's really tough to admit is that just like any human endeavor, you're going to get some accidents when cops who have a monopoly on violence are tasked to do their job just because they are human beings. There's going to be accidental deaths. There's going to be people who do make on the ridiculous, on the bell curve, this is on the really fringe of stupid, awful mistakes for a human being to make, but they will happen on a long enough time scale on 100%. Cops are going to accidentally kill people. And so if you want this to, to not happen as much in the future, because asking it to happen at a rate of 0% is impossible. That's never going to happen, and it's ridiculous for you to ask that. Just ask yourself, what can we do to have this happen a lot less in the future? Number one, it, for all of those chintzy laws, whether it's the air freshener or a brake tag or whatever you people call it, let's just get rid of all of those. The fewer excuses cops have to pull you over, the less this is going to happen. And is it really for the greater good of the people that you have an updated sticker on your license plate if it means that every once in a while a Dante Wright is going to lose his life through no fault of anybody? It's just that's what happens. So that that's the first thing I would point out. The other thing i would point out is that there is some fault on the guy who got in enough trouble that he had an active warrant and then tried to run from the cops again and he didn't deserve to die but it's it kind of falls under the umbrella and this is a very cynical umbrella but it exists 
of if you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And again, didn't deserve to die, but you're really oh. pushing the envelope there if you're running from the cops when you have an active warrant. I mean, even if she had tased him, there's a good chance that it would incapacitate him while he was driving and he could have hit someone and died anyway. You know, it's it, it it's it's a tragedy all the way around. But let's focus on what we can do for this to happen the least amount in the future. And I, that's the only thing that can make you feel better because this story just sucks. All, no, no, everything about it. I mean, w- one of the things that seems just crazy to me is that the taser is in the exact same place as the gun, just on the opposite side of the body. So, and uniform dictates that they be in a certain place. So if you are a left-handed person and it's designed for a right-handed person, you know, your, your quick draw <laughs> It, it's designed for a right-handed person. So in Minnesota, the pistol is on the right so that the right-handed person can go like this and the taser is on the left. Well, she's left-handed. And they're saying that that's one of one of the issues. In the heat of the moment, she just got a little confused and she thought she was going for a taser, but she went for her, her gun instead. And there is no doubt, nobody is denying that this woman thought she had the taser in her hand. She told her partner to get away because I've got a taser. I'm going to tase him. And then she yelled three times, taser, 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 squeezed off a shot and immediately went, oh my God, and completely flipped out. So nobody is saying that, you know, this is a ruse. Right, the intent's not there. But exactly. reckless, there's, a, there's a case to be made for a reckless manslaughter, maybe, because if you make a mistake, that that's damn bad. And you're so reckless in making that mistake, it resulted in the loss of human life. You know, I, I guess there's some legal gray area. Should should she go to jail for the rest of her life? Of course not. Should she do like 30 days in jail? I, I mean, that's a maybe. You know, that's that's kind of a, a legal call, and I wouldn't be necessarily against it. Because, I mean, when you make a mistake that's so damn bad that someone else dies and, and it's that bad, I'm not, I'm not even really against jail time, but I'm with you. The intent was not there. She's not some bloodthirsty racist monster. Rudderless and, vengeance is just as bad as cold-blooded murder. And this is rudderless. Agreed. This, Agreed. They are trying to make her pay for something that other people have done cavalierly. That is not the case here. And there, there are people who, you know, are making speeches and running for reelection based on shit that just isn't true. You know, there's an interesting thing about Minnesota. They have a law that no other states have, and it's called the spark of life law. Do you know what the spark of life law is? You want to hear something that is absolute madness? The Smark of Life law in Minnesota says that there is certain information about an individual's past that cannot be admitted in a trial. And in this case, that comes to the fact that he was convicted of armed robbery, placing a gun to a woman's head and stealing her money, that he had a prote- there was a protective order against him for shit that he did with a former relationship that he was in, and that he was, uh, he was a known runner to the police. And in fact, there was a bench warrant out. So none of that, what the jury was not allowed to hear any of that. However, the spark of life law says that although the bad stuff doesn't necessarily get admitted. Anything that's good about him does. Anything anything that shows his spark of life, that he was a human. So this trial has had endless stories about how uh, you know he's got a premature baby at home and about how he fed his premature baby with a Q-tip dipped in milk. And uh, all of these incredibly biased takes that were designed to make the jury see him in a way other than what the full picture is the spark of life law in minnesota makes it so you can't say yeah he did he fed his premature baby with a q-tip dipped in milk but he also held a gun to a woman's head you can't tell him that you can't tell him that he also held a gun to a woman's head because somehow that's prejudicial but the spark of life is meant to show that he's actually a human being i mean how Uh, how insane is that it's it's not that insane oh it, it, it's the only state that has it. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I don't think. It's, well, also, if you know, well, maybe that, other states, maybe other states have similar laws with different names. They're just called different things. Yeah. But it, if you know, that's the case when you're on the jury, you're like, clearly they're not telling us everything. <clears throat> it, it, you know, I'm not saying it works against them, but I, I, I don't think that's a, a, a make or break rule in, in most cases. But um, can I, can I respond over here to Leslie? She says, what a weird take. If there was no laws to break, he would be okay. But if there were no guns, she couldn't shoot anyone. I have at it. Okay, so if there were no laws to break, um, he would be okay. You know, I did this one weird year of my life where I lived in Oklahoma. And 
they don't have brake tags there. They don't have any sort of registration or whatever. I mean, that you can, you have to register your car, but there's nothing visible on your car, like a sticker on your windshield or a sticker on your license plate or anything that can get you pulled over. Because freedom. Just, huh? Because <laughs> freedom. I don't know. I just, whatever. Hey, it's a money generator in the state of Illinois. That's all I know. Yeah. We've got, we've got more paved roads than they do in Oklahoma. So maybe but, you know, we, we need them up there. But do we all agree it's just a money generator? There is no actual benefit to the public no. safety? Okay, no. so can we well, abolish unless, this? Unless, unless you include paved roads as being a benefit to the greater... No, no. My, my roads are paid because I pay an extra 37 cents a gallon every time I buy gas. And like 12 cents goes to the, the feds and the rest of it goes to whatever state I'm in. And so that pays for the roads. This is a trash law that gives cops an excuse to pull you over. And if you do think they're racist monsters, wouldn't you want to get rid of all these laws? Like, wouldn't yeah. you basically be like a, a a staunch libertarian? Yeah. Well, how come they're not? Like, well, I, well wait a second. I don't know if I, I agree with the want to be a staunch libertarian. And I don't know that all of these laws need to go away because I do think the communities need to generate income in ways like this. I, I think that they're abused. I do. I, By pulling I'm not, people over and giving them tickets? No, no, yeah. no, no. Look, I think I think they you, need, I think if they get, need more money for being, the roads. Part then, of being in a civilized society is adhering to the rules of the said civilized society. And if that means you got to get your tags renewed every year, you get your damn tags renewed every yeah, year. Yeah, but you or wouldn't move say, to a state that doesn't have it. Yeah, but if if it's unjust laws, there there there's nothing wrong with. Yeah fighting well, against yeah. unjust laws you wouldn't say that about segregation or jim crow oh of if that's the laws, the laws of the land then you got to follow it well, no, no, no no the law if the laws of the land are stupid and uh, and they result in people dying all for the benefit of just a little bit more money when you all uh, if, if look if you really need the money that damn bad how about we stop pulling people over giving them tickets send them to court shooting them ruining their lives and maybe just raise the 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 tax on gas a, a penny or something um, well, let me answer your Jim Crow laws. Those laws were designed to subjugate other citizens. That is not the same thing at all. These laws that we're talking about here are designed to make sure that the community has money for stoplights and yeah, police, look, it's cars. You think and, that's and the and way the right. world works, but we well, can no, do that. No. That, but that's I know, a, but we can do that just fine for legitimate taxes. We don't have to in, so, in, so involve so the criminal justice system. So you're you're saying that license tags and ways the communities generate money for the greater good of everyone are the same as laws that were designed to subjugate citizens? You're saying that's no, 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 no. That's an exaggeration to prove a point that just no, because a law like exists doesn't saying. mean it needs to be revered and adhered to. Okay. Like, oh, you just got to you got to abide by the laws of the land or, or then, then that's what's right. Well, not, well, not, no, not you're, necessarily. You're, and so, look, look, if it is if they need more revenue, then then go ahead and take it from the tax base and, and do it without harassing people and sending people to damn court. Because we know if, if we know this, that's what this is for. Then why do we put up with it? We shouldn't. We should make them look if if you want money for the roads or courts or whatever, set the taxes and spend that money. Do not have cops pulling people over because oh. look, when once you once you involve this, then you yeah. have the chance of dying. Yeah. No one has ever died because they didn't like the gas tax. They either paid it or they didn't. And there is no what's the kid's name again? Dante Wright. Yeah, there is no Dante Wright from the gas tax, but there there is a Dante Wright. Because we have given cops the ability to, to introduce the criminal justice system into the revenue generating side of government. And it's not worth it to have dead people. Well, look, I, I, I don't I don't think that and maybe this is just because I come from a place where this was a given where as soon as you got your a car, part of getting the car was you have to pay extra money for this, that and the other thing. But. I mean, so I don't find it to be all that outrageous a concept. Now, you who come from a state where that has never been there, you would see that as some sort of excessive overtax. But but I don't. I I understand what the purpose of it is. I so I don't see the tags being necessarily these. I mean, yes, they are revenue generators, but I also understand that you need to generate revenue. Oklahoma you know, doesn't. How do they do it? Well, Oklahoma is a shithole compared to Illinois, especially it, Northern. At, yes, yeah. it is, yeah. dude. Look at their murder rate. Tell me, what's their SAT scores compared to Illinois? Look at their population. Let's look at their murder rate per capita. I bet you Oklahoma, Oklahoma outpaces Illinois. You're rattling off some Fox News stuff that when you break the numbers down, Illinois is not even in the top 10 of murderous states in the country, and Chicago isn't even the top 10 major cities' murder rates. But- it's, I'm saying it's you don't Obama's need an home and Hillary's home, so you know you gotta you gotta it's, lie. It's about not them. just that; it's it's also no, it 739 black dead people's 
so far this year. But but the thing is, is if you see a state that can live just fine without inspection stickers or brake tags or whatever variation you have in there, you know that we can live without it. You no. know that it's not oh, worth yes. people dying. Yes, a, a so state a state of like a, m a million people can probably live without it. A state with 20 million people can't. Oh, of course it can. No, of course they it can. can't, dude. Okay, well, we're getting into a stupid argument. No, they can't. They can't do it with and have the roads that we have. And, of course they can. And, no, they can't. They have 20 Come million on. people <laughs> paying uh, gas taxes. Dude, there ain't nothing but farms and grazing land in Oklahoma. I mean, have you been through the, the East Coast and seen how it's all built up? There is infrastructure that needs to be paid for that has absolutely no bearing on states like Oklahoma. How long have they Nebraska. had inspection stickers and how much of that infrastructure was built pre-inspection well, stickers? No, well, right. But every year it costs billions and billions of dollars to maintain them. It's not like, well, we got them. Now they That's don't cost fine. We can anymore. still take We can still right. take the revenue we're, from non-coercive sources. This is, this is not the conversation we're having. Um, so at any rate, I want to end it with uh, what she's facing. She's got two counts here, manslaughter charges. She's looking at 15 years each. They're going for the maximum, but they say Say that they will ask for even more than the maximum. Why are they going to ask for more than the maximum? Because Keith Ellison is asking for that. So, Keith Ellison social wants, justice. It's not wants, justice. It's social justice. Yeah. He wants an example made of this woman. And, uh, you know, it's it's just, it's disgusting. This is absolutely not. Hold on. What am I getting here? Well, I don't know. White people are evil. I got it. I got it. Oh, all right. All right. So um, I, I don't know that she took the, uh, the stand today. She was going to take the stand. Uh, and, and I don't think she did. So she might do that tomorrow, but it's going to be, it's going to be wrapping up soon. So anyway, if you're not paying attention to this case, it is a fascinating case. And, and the way that people, especially the Democrats in that state, man, <laughs> I'm sorry, but the Amy Klobuchar's, I mean, she is lying. She is lying. She knows damn well what the truth is here. And she, a prince of the community, come on. It's a tragic loss of a young life who probably had every opportunity. Well, not every opportunity. That's, that's another part. He had no opportunity. Maybe he could have turned it around. Maybe he could have gone on to cure cancer. We do not know. But to paint the 20 years that he spent on this earth as being princely is gross. It is gross and it is awful. And that's what they're doing. They, they are trying to turn this into something that it isn't. And there's a 26 year veteran of the police department, a 50 year old woman who is looking at spending the next 30 years of her life for something that she will probably cry herself to sleep over already. Does her being sad about it bring back Dante, Wright? No, absolutely not. But these are accidents and we don't treat accidents like premeditated murder. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to treat an accident, a tragic accident of incompetence, like she was out there hunting for people being black while driving. And my God, there are so many worthy situations that these people could be paying attention to, but I guess they don't, I guess they don't, they don't focus on a white cop. So why bother? Right? I mean, that's, isn't that what this is? This is a race thing. This it's, is it's a disgusting misuse of the racial divide that we have in this country. It's an exploitation of the current racial divide that we have in this country. And it is gross. Well, it's an inflammation of an almost non-existent racial divide that they keep stoking. But here's the tough question. What do you think our punishment should be? What would you think is justice in this case? 30 days in jail, a year in jail, no. Uh, no. zero days in jail. Zero Just, days in jail. I don't think wow. she's going to go to jail. Nothing? No, I, no, I think it's a tragic action. I think this doesn't count as like a manslaughter, though. You make a mistake and you don't have the intent, but someone <sighs> dies. Okay, That's you know the what? definition of manslaughter in Be layman's terms, isn't it? Because she is a police officer, I think that maybe, maybe there should be special circumstances where she does have to do jail. Maybe because the, 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 a police officer has to be better than the average person because theoretically they're trained and theoretically they're not supposed to make these mistakes at the same clip that a, a regular civilian would make these kinds of mistakes. So maybe you're right. But uh, uh, six months, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I She's not a murderer. Again, you know, I got into this with the Kyle Rittenhouse thing and people were so angry. I don't believe Kyle Rittenhouse is a murderer. I don't believe that she is a murderer. I there are murderers out there who don't get this kind of time. There are actual murderers who will walk 
And then, you know, the, the prosecutor will make some deal because the prisons are way too crowded. And, you know, an actual murderer will only get two years or something in prison. But meanwhile, this woman, they're looking they're looking to give her 50 years in prison, basically life in prison for something that, like I said, she had no it was a tragic, tragic accident. And we cannot treat accidents like we do premeditated murder. It's that's pretty much my take on it. Now, uh, whereas I say that story is being manipulated into the public sphere for purely uh, uh, exploitative uh, racial purposes, let's talk about some gender exploitation. What are you leaving? What are you waiting? Well, no, Leslie said, "Love you guys. Uh, sleep well. Gotta make the." Bye, Leslie. Bye, Leslie. Leslie, we're gonna. I'm gonna. Oh, you, you might not want to leave now. <laughs> we're we're gonna talk about the Sex and the City rapist. <laughs> oh yeah, Chris North. I don't know anything about this story, and I'm a big Chris, fan of no. Sex in the City, and I'm a Mr. big fan of Mr. Big. Mr. Big is apparently. A I mean, I'm on. I'm on Teen Hayden, definitely. But Mr. Mr. Big was a great character, and that was a great show. I don't know. I don't. I, yeah, I didn't get so, Leslie, time. you don't know about this. Christopher North uh, likes kiddos, right? And that is, and that is Jammer. Is he a rapist? What? No, it, no, he's a rapist. No, but it's he, not kiddos, uh, right? It's not, not underage. Kids. No, no. Okay. no. Well, it's twenty-year-old women, twenty-two-year-old women when he's sixty. Uh, <laughs> you know. It's, well, that's not pedophile. That's just no. Yeah, no. We, we draw that line of demarcation for a reason. All right, uh, you, we're not allowed to call him a pedophile. She's over eighteen. It's mm -hmm. look. Come on, you gotta be fair about this. It could be gross and it could be creepy, but let's not. Get oh, she knows about, about this, so she can go ahead and go go, go away, Leslie. Will. Well, you don't know our take on it, but she can listen tomorrow. She'll she's fine. These all these shows are available up there. On, she's uh, just gonna tell me to YouTube. f off in five minutes. That's all. Yeah. Uh, I, no, you know, Leslie, you. I'm definitely no. gonna cover this tomorrow because I'm sure that it'll still be trending because it's just being picked up now. It it started trending. This news came down about four o'clock this afternoon, and it's been itty bitty trending but by tomorrow it's going to be one of the top trends of the day because everybody's going to be talking about mr big the rapist Yikes. Ooh. all right so i'll read the story this is uh the hollywood reporter who is breaking this uh note this story includes graphic descriptions of alleged sexual assaults and again these are all alleged but uh uh mr big is not denying these situations with these women he is simply saying uh, then it was consensual, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that happens. She was asking for it. But it is very strange that these two women came out within weeks of each other uh, with very similar stories and they do not know each other. They these live are, on different. Are these coordinating thoughts? These are, these are two women of, of vastly different ages uh, with experiences that happened uh, years apart, a decade apart. Well, that sounds like no, then they are not coordinating thoughts who describe okay. uh, very similar interactions with him and, and what happened. One is in California and one lives in New York. So, you know, it's definitely we got a whole country between them. So this is not, it was the revival of the television series that had made him such an iconic character that was. Wait, triggering. hang on, hang on. How far are you in sex in the city? Have you seen where Carrie goes to LA yet? No, six episodes and I'm out. Oh, okay. No. I'm out. I'm done. I'm not, I'm not playing this game anymore. Why not? It's not good. It's not good. It's not no, good. It's worth watching. It's worth watching. Okay. I got it. I got. I get it. Reasonable minds can disagree on the worthiness of that show. Okay. okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on. I saw every episode. I'm a fan. All right. All right. You probably had a woman sitting next to you for everyone, too. I did. Every episode had go. a woman All sitting right. next to Well, you try to watching it alone as a guy on a couch. That might not work. Right. That might not work. Uh, oh, yeah. so you need a woman is what you need. That's yes. your problem. Okay. I, I think you need, I think you, need like? to be, you need to be game and you need to be giving it to her. You need to be enthusiastic about her favorite show because there are you know benefits for you down the road. That's when right. There's no, when there's no benefits for me, I'm just watching a bunch of. So I, I didn't really women. like the show and I was just into it for nefarious reasons. No, I, I, th I think that, uh, I think that your judgment is, is clouded. I think your memory of it is clouded. <laughs> I, I think, right. that, you know, probably so, probably right. so. Okay. So tell it me was, about the story again, Noth. It was the revival of the television series that had made him such an iconic character that was triggering for the two women. Zoe now 40 and Lily now 31, both alleged they were sexually assaulted by actor Chris Noth. The two women who approached, Hollywood reporter separately and months apart and who do not know each other said promotions and press reports for the new HBO max show. And just like that are what triggered these memories. 
uh, in which Noth reprises his role, the new show, uh, Noth reprises his role as Mr. Big, stirred painful memories of the incidents they say occurred in Los Angeles in 2004 and in New York City in 2015, respectively. To protect their privacy, The Hollywood Reporter is allowing both women to use so- pseudonyms T- to protect their privacy. But not him. <laughs> but not him. They can say whatever they want at this point. They're going to be protected. But not this him. This is a one-way street. <laughs> That's right. It's, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, yeah. Okay. Lily, now a journalist, reached out to the Hollywood Reporter in August. Quote, I'm not sure how you go about this sort of story and how you find the other victims. She All right, wrote. stop. Stop. She's a journalist. You, you just said that. Yeah, but she's so now I get the one. impression she's playing for the camera. She's not a good one. Metaphorically the Hollywood, speaking, yeah. The Hollywood Reporter heard from Zoe in October. She still works in the entertainment industry and is fearful of repercussions if her identity were known. But seeing that he was reprising his role in Sex in the City set off something in me, she says. For so many years, I buried it. She decided it was time to try to go public with who he is. Contacted for comment. Noth sent the Hollywood Reporter a statement. The accusations against me made by individual. By the way, this is just boilerplate. This is <laughs> this is what uh, you always. Get. And the first four words, you know, it's boilerplate. <laughs> the accusations against me. All right, you're yeah. you're guilty. Yeah. The accusations against me made by individuals I met years, even decades ago, are categorically false. These stories could have been from thirty years ago or thirty days ago. No always means no. That is a line I do not cross. The encounters were consensual. It's difficult not to question the timing of these stories coming out. I don't know for certain why they are surfacing now, but I do know this. I did not assault these women. After graduating from college in 2004, Zoe, then 22, moved to Los Angeles to work an entry-level job for a high-profile film firm uh, where Noth and other celebrities regularly had business. Quoting her now, he would walk by my desk and flirt with me. He somehow got my number from the directory and was leaving messages on my work phone. My boss was like, Mr. Biggs leaving messages on your voicemail, she says. That, now former boss, tells The Hollywood Reporter she witnessed Noth talking to Zoe at her desk. Zoe also let her listen to some kind of flirty voicemails from him. The ex-boss says she thought it odd that Noth, who was 49 at the time, had gotten Zoe's number and left those messages, but says she didn't find it alarming. This was peak sex in the city days, she says. He was like a god to us. Noth lived in New York, but at one point, Zoe says, he invited her to come to the pool at the building in West Hollywood where he had an apartment. She told him she had a friend who lived in that very same building and had been to that pool often. That August, she and her best friend from college, who was visiting from the East Coast, excitedly went to the pool to meet Noth. The visiting friend confirms going to the pool and sitting with Zoe and Noth in the jacuzzi. All right, so you're you're going out to L.A. to party with your friend from college who's you know got this big, cool job in the entertainment industry, and your friend says, you want to go hang out with Mr. Big from Sex and the City? <sighs> I mean, how do you think that went over, <laughs> right? I mean, that was like, yes, let's go. Zoe says Noth asked her all sorts of questions about my major and what I studied. <laughs> so what's your major? You're fascinating. You know, typically you don't see this uh, intersection of beauty and brains like I'm seeing. It was you really, you're, re- you're really grown up for your age. <laughs> right. Uh. Yeah. He had a book with him and told her to take a look at it because he was thinking of doing a project based on the material. Then, according to Zoe and her friend, he said he had to go to his apartment to take a call, but he left the book, asking Zoe to look through it and bring it back to his apartment when she was done. Okay, so first of all, Yes, he was Mr. Big, so he was very famous among women of a certain age, but let's not kid ourselves, he's not George Clooney or Brad Pitt. He is a TV show guy from an HBO show. It's not like he went on to have a major movie career. He is a C-level celebrity at best. He's the guy from Law & Order, that's where I know him from, from the early Law & Orders, and he's the guy in Sex and the City. But this is certainly not a film star, this is not a major Hollywood star. Would you at least grant me that 
He's not an A-lister, but if you're from Bug Tussle, this is as big yes. as it gets. Right, but DJs are big deals to people from Bug Tussle. You know, the bass player from a middling band that had one hit in the 80s is a celebrity to people from Bug Tussle. Yeah, that's, this that's is, the good part about being one of us. <laughs> this is a girl who works at a firm where major Hollywood stars come and go every day. Okay, so she needs... We're easily impressed, and that's okay. Yeah, I guess. Uh, so he, he leaves the book cause her friend is with her and he wants to get her alone. So he, he says, yeah, this book, I think it's fascinating. I'm thinking of having it developed into something I want to do. First of all, Chris Noth doesn't have that juice. Okay. Chris Noth, nope. don't make movies for Chris Noth. He's lucky if he gets cast in a movie, <laughs> you know, I mean, he doesn't open movies. Cool. He's not above the credit. You know, it's not like Brad Pitt in, no, it's not Chris Noth in <laughs> nobody. Nobody's going to see what that. What is movie. his biggest project? Uh, sex in the city i said that's, that's it. it that's that's the pinnacle of his career what about that law and order stuff you mentioned that wasn't bigger no 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 not at all no he was no no this was much bigger this made him a pop culture sensation but he wasn't again he's not robert Downey jr or tom cruise or you know he's not he's just not on that level he's not he's not jamie fox or will smith you know he's not he's chris Noth. you no, know fair he enough Fair he's enough. uh he's like Paul Giamatti at best, you know. That's where that's where Ooh, he is. That's, that's the a level great that comparison. He's, yep. Yeah. Well, that's the level that he's hanging at. He's he, he's he's guys from Game of Thrones big, you know. John <laughs> Snow maybe. <laughs> yes, he's Kit Harrington big. That's that's what he is. And you know we don't even know that because Kit Harrington might have a big movie career because he's much younger and now he's free to do whatever he wants. So we'll see what he does. But yeah, whoever played on. Ned Stark. Let's not kid ourselves. Oh, that's uh, that's Sean Bean. He's yeah, actually, Sean Bean. Uh, yeah, actually, Sean Bean probably has a much better career than Chris. Yeah, Bell. man, he's a, he's a big British film star. Like, well, he, been... he he overlapped with uh, Lord of the Rings and all that. Yeah, did he? I don't know. You know, I've never seen one of those Hobbit movies. Uh, I think he's in like the first two. Yeah, uh, kid is not huge, Leslie. He's not huge. He's not an A list. He might be. He might have a bunch of projects in the coming, but he's never been nominated for anything. He doesn't open movies. He's hot. And he's hot as in he's somebody, uh, you know, they're probably signing to projects and development deals. But no, Kid is not huge. George Clooney is huge. Brad Pitt is huge. Uh, okay, you know who's huge, who's young, who's probably in the same sort of uh, uh, generation as Kid Harrington? Timothy Chalamet is huge. Kid Harrington is not in that league. He's just not. Not yet. He might be. I love him. I love Jon Snow. But let's not kid ourselves. No, I don't watch British TV because British TV is not huge. British TV is TV from Britain. It's it's just not. I mean, he's, so he's popular over there and he gets a lot of work over there. But let's be honest. He's not being paid $25 million for every time he walks on screen. He's he's popular in Britain on BBC Four or, or whatever. So I, this is not a knock. Just understand there is a pecking order. There is fucking Leonardo DiCaprio. And then there's... Chris Noth, somewhere down here. And, and somewhere down here, this is where you got the Buscemi's. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the, maybe maybe I'm trying to think of somebody else. A Jack know. Black. A, a Jack Black's probably in here somewhere. Yep, you know, yep. He he's, between a and, he's between A-Lister and Chris Noth. Bradley Cooper, Chris Noth, you know? Uh, yeah, Chris Noth is like Ken Jong or something where you'd know him if you saw him, and he's not going to be the star, but he'll be in some cool stuff. That is exactly what he is. You'd yeah. know him if you saw him. But, you know, if I said to my mother, did you hear Chris Noth got in trouble? She'd go, who? I don't yeah. know who. But if I said to her, uh, did you hear Bradley Cooper got in trouble? She'd go, oh, my God, what did he do? You know, that's I use my mom as the barometer for people who are famous. Fair enough. <laughs> you know, it's, she's she is middle America who only knows you if you're A-list. Okay. So let's, let's get into the story. So he, he has the book. He leaves her the book, but her friend's there. So he can't really put the moves on her. So he wants to get her alone. So he says, read this. I'm thinking about having it developed into a, into a, a movie that I want to do. And I'd love to have your input on it because, you know, you're so smart. And I really, I really value your opinion. So he goes back up to his apartment. After a while, she comes up, knocks on the door. And here's what happens. <laughs> Are you ready? This is not funny. This is terrible if true. Uh, but I'm giggling because it's uh, so awkward and so creepy. All right. When she went to his apartment to return the book, Zoe says he kissed her as the door opened uh, she, while she stepped through the door. She tentatively kissed back and then said, 
I, I, I'd like to see how tentative it is. You know, I mean, I, you know, <laughs> this is this what is, is there like, surveillance footage? I don't know. This is Mr. Big from Sex in the City. This is at the height of the Sex in the City thing, and she's a woman of the age who probably loves Sex in the City. And I don't know. Yeah. Now, what happens next is horrible, but you know. Look, I love Ted Lasso. There's uh, no but on there. There's no but. What happens next is horrible. Okay, that's true. That is true. Um, she stepped through the door. She tentatively kissed back, but then said, thank you. I'm going back to my friend now. The kiss itself didn't alarm her. She thought a kiss from Mr. Big would be fun, a fun story to tell her friends. But she says he then, this is where it gets ugly. He then pulled her towards him, moved her towards the bed, pulled off her shorts and her bikini bottom and began to rape her from behind. Uh, th this is not Louis CK pulling it out or Al Franken, you know, just posing with his honk, honk, you know, do it. No, this is full on rape. If there is any truth to this, this will be a criminal case. You, you know, this isn't just, I mean, I, I would imagine that tomorrow what we're going to hear is that LA police have opened up an investigation. Because this is not the kind of thing that just goes away and you don't worry about. What she is describing here is full on rape. Uh, thank you. I'm going back to my friend. The kiss itself didn't bother him. She was Mr. Big. Good story to tell her friends. But she says he then pulled her towards him, moved her towards the bed, pulled off her shorts and bikini bottom and began to rape her from behind. She was facing a mirror. It was very painful. And I yelled out, stop, she says. And he didn't. Uh, and he didn't. I said... Can you at least get a condom? And then he laughed at me. When it was over, she says, I realized there was blood on my shirt. I got out of there. I went to my friend's apartment in the same building. The friend visiting from college was already there, she says. I walked right in and went to the bathroom and tried to get the blood out of my shirt. They wanted to know what happened. I said, I just want to go home. The visiting friend pursued her and said, you're scaring me. That friend, now a child psychologist in Boston, tells The Hollywood Reporter that Zoe was strikingly different when she returned from Noth's apartment. She went right into the powder room. So basically the stories are all matching up here. She went right into the powder room, which is a fancy British way of saying shitter. Uh, when she came out, uh, she went straight into the power room, powder room. When she came out, she was very aloof, kind of cool. She was a very gregarious, sweet, friendly person. It was a very weird change in her. She asked what happened, but Zoe coldly said she wasn't going to talk about her personal life. Quote, it was not like her, the friend says. We left. Riding the elevators was awkward. She wouldn't talk. She wouldn't make eye contact. When we got in the car, I started pressing her. You have to tell me what happened. Something's wrong. I don't remember the words she said, but I said, I'm talking, I'm taking you to the hospital. The two went to Cedar sinai where Zoe told staff she had been assaulted. I had stitches. Two police officers came. I wouldn't say who it was, Zoe says. She feared that she would not be believed and felt she would be fired if she accused him publicly or even at her workplace. At the hospital, quote, they gave me a little crisis counseling brochure and some medicine. Contacted by the Hollywood Reporter, Cedar sinai Hospital told the Hollywood Reporter that they do not keep records dating back to 2004. According to Zoe's former boss, remember this is the boss who said, ooh, Mr. Big is leaving flirty messages on your So the boss already knows that there's something here. According to Zoe's former boss, Zoe called her later that day and told her that Noth had attacked her. Zoe doesn't remember making that call, although the boss does. I was driving behind where Soho House is now, and I think I stopped and pulled over because it was all so horrible, her ex-boss says. She was very upset kind of in shock. I was in shock, but at Zoe's request, she did not disclose the attack to anyone. I was 25 at the time, Zoe says. It was a lot for me to process. I didn't know what to do. Uh, she notes that this was more than a decade before the Me Too movement. Zoe says she started having nightmares and flashbacks. She was finding it hard to concentrate at work, blah, blah, blah. Okay, not blah, 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 not blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it goes into now all of the things that you could probably imagine a woman, a young woman would, would have in the aftermath of something like that. Okay. Uh, she also goes on, she told her mother, she told all of her friends back home. All of her friends have been contacted by the Hollywood reporter and said, oh yeah, no, no. She told this story back then when it happened, it was, it really messed her up. So that's just to say that, this girl, Zoe, has a whole bunch of people who are like, yeah, when it happened, she talked about it. You know, it's probably hard to get a whole bunch of people to lie for you.
is what I'm saying. You, you know what I mean? Uh, Lily. Now the story with Lily. Lily was a server in the VIP section of the now shuttered New York nightclub number eight, which means she's really hot. She's a VIP room. Server. What do you know about number eight? I don't know anything. Do you? Okay. No, no, no. I, I don't know anything. But, but is this 11 years later? No, this is 2000. Uh, yeah, 2004. So 11 years later. So this is 2015. Okay, I'm just keeping up with the timeline because I'm, yeah. I'm hearing all this for the first time. Uh, num uh, I'm sure number eight is a fancy Manhattan place. Well, Sex in the City. Uh, no, never mind. Sorry, that's I'm jumping ahead. Ah. It's got a VIP room, and it's in Manhattan. So okay, yeah, <laughs> you know. we can make some decent assumptions. Yeah, yep. she's a ten. The you know the VIP room waitresses are ten. At least a nine. At least at a, a nine. minimum, right? Uh, if she's competent, she can be a nine. If she's really competent and can work on weekends. Lily was a server in the VIP section at the now shuttered New York nightclub number eight in 2015 when she met Noth. She had been a fan since he starred in Law and & Order and, of course, knew him from Sex in the City. I was truly starstruck, she says. He was hitting on me for sure. I was flattered. I knew he was married, which is shameful of me to admit. She was 25. He was 60. Noth got her number and asked her out. I was like, that's crazy. Mr. Big is asking me out to dinner. And he asked her to meet him at Il Cantintori, which, as a fan of the show, Lily knew had been the setting for Sex and the City's episode, Carrie Bradshaw shows, throws her 35th birthday party. So he asked her to dinner. That's a move. Mr. Big asked her to dinner at a famous restaurant, which was featured in the show. Yikes. That's a move. That's a 60-year-old creeper move. Yeah, it, that is. That's that's bad mm -hmm. sign, girls. Bad sign. Lily's friend, Alex, who has known her since high school and who was also living in New York, says she advised her not to go out with Noth. I just didn't have a great feeling about it, her friend says. She was like, no, I think he'll be nice about it. He was nice and respectful when I met him at the club. It's just dinner, but I've always been the mom of everyone. Also, when you're in it, you don't see the red flags. So that's what Lily says. Lily says she was always the mom of all her friends, but since it was her at the center of this whole thing, she didn't see it. I know we're running late. We'll wrap this up. Lily thought the fact that he invited her to dinner showed some interest in getting to know her, but she says when she arrived at the time he had set, the kitchen had already closed. They had wine at the bar as Noth talked about his discipline. Okay. They had wine at the bar as Noth talked about his disinclination to appear in a third Sex in the City movie. He's talking shop with her, making her feel like she's behind the scenes. She's getting info. This is these are all creeper moves. These Inside all... info. We're at the si mm -hmm. setting of a episode that you would probably know of mm -hmm. that you probably mentioned in a conversation before. And, and, you know. and he's name checking the show, and he's you know reminding her at every turn who he is and if roping not, her in. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Talk about grooming. This what do you think? Fun. Should I do a third? Should there be a third Sex in the City movie? Yeah. Tell me about Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh, let me tell you, I'll tell you stuff that only you're going to know about. You know what I mean? It's that whole thing. Uh, they had wine at the bar as Noth talked about his disinclination to appear in a third Sex in the City movie. That project was finally shelved in 2017. He asked me a lot about my job and my trajectory, she says. She told him she she told him that she was working on a career in journalism. At the as the evening wore on, she says she had a little too much to drink though she was nowhere near blacking out. And she says her fan worship of Noth was, n was such that she almost felt she was having an out-of-body experience just being on the date. With the restaurant closing, he told her his apartment was just around the corner. Noth has owned a Greenwich Village apartment since 1994. He had a collection of whiskeys that they could sample. Quote, I was not super sexually active, not wild and crazy, Lily says. Now she finds it humiliating to admit that she didn't think he would try to sleep with her. I thought, we're going to drink whiskey and talk about his acting career. It all sounds so stupid now, Lily says. The apartment was an amazing place. We were listening to music and he was and he has all these books about art and fashion. Oh, those are those are definitely creeper moves. These are, you know. Ugh, all things that uh, well do you think Christopher Noss sits around reading books about art and no. fashion no nope. no but, I, but I think you set pieces for a stabbing cabin 
but but I, yes, but I, and I and I do think that he used his position. I mean, what guy wouldn't as Mr. Big on Sex in the City to get all kinds of women? Even but though you wouldn't married, have to, you wouldn't even have to try no, hard. You wouldn't exactly. have to do all this. You don't I have mean, to rape when you're Mr. Big. You don't. There Lord, are women. That I know. Willing. It's like the Darren Sharper thing. I was like, what are you doing? Right. What is that about? All right, we won't get distracted. The apartment was an amazing place, she says. We were listening to music, and he has all these books about art and fashion. He tried to make out with me. I cautiously entertained it. He's older and really looked older. He kept trying and trying and trying, and I should have said no more firmly and left. Well, she's blaming herself there. That's not fair. And then the next thing I knew, he pulled down his pants, and he was standing in front of me. He thrust his penis into my mouth, she says. Lily says she brought up that he was married with children. Noth had married in 2012 and at the time had one child. He said, marriage is a sham. Monogamy is not real. The next thing she knew, he was having sex with me from the back. Again, this is a forced entry from the back. From the back in a chair. We were in front of a mirror. I was kind of crying as it all happened. When it was over, she says, I went to the bathroom and put on my skirt. I was feeling awful, totally violated. All of my dreams with this star I loved for years were gone. Man, man you never want to see Superman without his cape. You know, that's what they say about meeting your heroes. Yeah, especially you, if Superman's raping you. Or Michael Jordan being a total dick, right? You don't, <laughs> you don't, you don't want to see that. <laughs> All of my dreams with this star I loved for years were gone. She called an Uber. Revisiting this brings her to tears, yet she says she finds it freeing to tell the story now. Lily's friend Alex says she called her from the car. She was pretty hysterical. She says Lily told her that he had pretty forcibly had sex with her, and Alex said they should call the police, but Lily wouldn't hear of it. Lily says she didn't remember making the call. Okay, those are the two charges, and then there's a whole bunch more about this, but both of these women's stories are backed up by numerous friends who not aren't just coming forward now, but friends who can pinpoint that, yes, this night she told us this happened. She even went to the hospital. For one of them. And her boss knew about it, who is no longer her boss. So why would her boss, you know, still all these years, years later be making this up for her? So, you know, I guess you got to ask yourself, do you believe that, uh, that, you know, this is possible? And I got, as a guy, uh, that's a lot of power. He was, been, he's been given, he's been given a lot of power as Mr. Big from sex in the city. Of course it's possible. And, and you don't like to admit that these people exist, but I don't know. It's just so gross. Cause like, doesn't that take the fun out of it? Like, why do you want to, why, why do you even want to do that? Like, I don't know. I don't get the it. Whole, the whole fun, the whole point is it. the consent. Like there've been times when a girl said yes. And I'll, I've almost just wanted to go to sleep. It's like, that's all I wanted to hear. That's, he is though. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I made it through the first six episodes of the first season. He's an incredible douchebag. He is not a cool guy. He is a douchebag guy. He's a big phony, big talker. You know, it's like, Bro. Uh, so, yeah. So he, get used to him. He's going to be there through the whole show. He does. No, not I'm not. I'm done. I'm done. I have six, six episodes. And especially now I'm just like, eh, I don't have anything to do with this show anymore. Eh, it's a, it's fine. Although to be fair, I'm hearing pretty good things about this new reboot. I'm <laughs> I might actually jump ahead to the reboot and I may yeah. actually enjoy the reboot. I'm probably I'm gonna hearing, watch it. I'll get I'm I'll watch it. Not a reboot. I guess it's a sequel. It's a not a reboot because it's not. right. But uh I, I understand that it's good. And somebody who I really respect, who feels the same way about the original series as me, told me, actually, you know what? The new one's pretty good. You know, if you're, it's pretty good. They're different characters. It's a I total... hear Samantha's not in there. No, and... Kim Cattrall is not in there because they hate each other. Because her and Sarah Jessica Parker hate each other. That's really unfortunate because that was it's the best but, part of the show. Yeah. But they, they didn't kill her, though. They didn't kill her off. So uh, she'll probably show up in like episode seven or something right. like that. Well, no, the plan is because I just read a big interview about this. Because remember, I went deep in this show because I, I promised that I would get involved. Uh, the character Samantha is supposedly in London working at a PR firm there. And her and Carrie had a falling out when Carrie dropped her as her publicist. And so uh, they now they're oh, angry. No, they're writing it in. Yes. And they're, they're leaving the opportunity for her to come back. And there was a, apparently a scene in one of the early episodes. I guess there was only one or two episodes already, but there was a, supposedly a scene where maybe it's upcoming where Carrie receives a text from Samantha. And that's like the big cliffhanger. Like, is she going to respond to the text? The producers of And Just Like That are hoping 
that Kim Cattrall will agree to come and be on season two. But there are problems between Sarah Jessica Parker and Kim Cattrall. They don't like each other. They don't like all each right. other at all. Now, with that said, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. If you if you do not want to know a spoiler about the new Sex in the City show, please go away now because I'm about to say something. No, you can hear it. <laughs> You're going to have to just tough it out. Put, put the earphones on. The big shocker of episode one is that Chris Noth, Mr. Big, dies at the end of episode one. That's like the big shocker that everyone was talking about. I mean, it was all over the internets and all that stuff. So now, a week after the first episode drops, Chris Noth is killed off in the first episode. And a week later, this story comes out. Sounds like the producers may have known that this story was coming. I mean, people know that these stories are coming. They call around. They would have called the producers of Sex in the City and asked for comment on this. So it's very, re- it's very reasonable that they killed him off in the first episode because they believe these stories are true and there is going to be a lot no, more. Because if story. they knew, they wouldn't have put him in there to begin with. They would have killed. Well, him no, off but they shot it. They shot it months and months ago. Months and months ago, the, the original pilot. They had to sell that to HBO Max before they could start making. They make the new episodes now. The new episodes are oh, shooting okay. now. So it's, it's Hayden around. Where's Hayden? I don't, I don't know. I don't even know who okay. Hayden is. <laughs> I don't. But that may explain why they killed him off in episode one. Because they had an inkling that this shit was coming. All right. We'll see you tomorrow at high noon. Thank you all so much. Support the show any way you can. You see it down there. Help support our effort with tips. Your kindness means the most in this Christmas season. I'm not kidding. It, it, I don't expect we're going to make any money this year or this month. So, I mean, because people got to put their money elsewhere. I get it. You got kids. You can't be supporting your stupid little streamer show. But if you can, you get a bonus. You can throw a little something towards the show. Please help us out because I'm not anticipating us making our nut at all. Okay. There we go. All right. Bye, James. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow at high noon. And um, that's it. I love you guys. You're the best. Support the show right there. If you can, I'm not going to hold it against you. I understand. I get it. Nobody gets it more than I do. I was down and out. Ross Rubio is doing a callback in the chat room that... Genius. Genius Ross Rubio, genius Rod Stewart reference. I love it. To me, I was down and out without a doubt. Looking for All right, I gotta go. I'm hot. I gotta go to bed. I love you. I Bye, everybody. Out without a doubt, the only home I've known. I am not the hurting kind. I wish you all the best. I have come so very far to finally pass the test. I was down and out without a doubt, looking for my home. I was down and out without a doubt, the only home I've known. I would like to settle down, just live off the land. Serenity is what I found. I have to make a stand. Everyone has a dream. Honey, so did I. I was lost in the world. Enough to make you cry. I was down and out without a doubt. Looking for my home. I was down and out, without a doubt, the only home I've known. I was down and out, without a doubt, looking for my home. I was down and out, without a doubt, the only home I've known.